I remember friends from wars, all but we forgot, all of them distilled into each wound we caught. Those wounds are all the painful places where we fought, battles better left behind, ones we never sought. What is it that we spent, and what was it we bought? Songs from of the Scattering. Welcome back to Dune Saga, everyone. This is season two of our Dune Houses of the Lansrod campaign. I am Eric at Maron Recluse Online, your game master for this epic multi-arc awesome adventure series, which continues tonight with our third storyline, Instruments of Canley. This program features adult, adult situations and language and may not be suitable for all ages, so discretion, listener discretion is advised. We are Vorpal Tales and we play a wide assortment of games seven days a week that fall into two categories, awesome adventures and terrifying tales. So be sure to check our calendar on warpletales.com to stay up to date with all of our shows. Don't forget to pick up your copy of Dune Adventures in the Imperium uh, in PF format on DriveThruRPG or in physical copy at modifius.com slash dune. While you're on DriveThruRPG, check out some of our very own Warpal Tales supplements. They include characters, monsters, and scenarios made for many of the games that we play weekly. Follow us on Twitch. Visit our website at warpletales.com and find the link to join our Discord. We're on most major media, uh, social media outlets uh, such as YouTube, where you can catch up on previous episodes. So remember to follow, subscribe, and hit the bell to get all the updates. Be sure also to uh, visit our Vorpal Tales sponsors and affiliates like Dungeon Crate and Jim Hammer and Sons. Uh, you can scratch that Loot Crate itch with a membership to Dungeon Crate. Every box is chock full of dice, miniatures, tabletop terrain, and original adventures perfect for your D&D campaign. Sign up for your box at DungeonCrate.com. New members can use the discount code Warple Tales DC in all caps for five dollars off their new subscription. For dice, books, magic items, and more, check out Gem Hammer and Sons at shop.gemhammer.com. Make sure to check out their latest Kickstarter, Rolox Guide to Violence. We want to thank Modifius Entertainment for making awesome games for us to play and for providing support to their players. Special music shoutouts go to Infraction, Mocha Music, Repulsive Sound, Ajnia, Machinima Sound, The Whole Other, Tabletop Audio, White Bat Audio, Raspberry Sound, and Lear Moon for the use of their excellent music. You can find more awesome ambient sounds and tunes over at Bandcamp.com, Opiri.com, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Also, we want to thank Roll20 for the use of their virtual tabletop platform, perfect for hosting our games. As always, we want to give a big shout out and thanks to our patrons for supporting what we do and for helping us to grow. Be sure to check our Patreon page at patreon.com slash warpletales to find out how you too can be awesome and support what we do. And last and certainly not least, thank you to all of our viewers and fans for tuning in. Our house entourage is here and ready to engage in the deadliest of intrigues. Agents of the Imperium, remind our audience who you are, where they can find you online, and who you will be playing this evening. Uh, beginning with Rachel. Hello. Uh, happy Vorpalversary. Uh, it is my one year anniversary of joining Purple Tales. Yay! Um, anyway, I just feel like I share that like at every available opportunity. Uh, my name is Rachel. You can find me Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere on the internet. And I will be playing Lady Daphne, who is currently the heir of House Cheshire. Currently. <laughs> uh, Devin. Hello all, you can find me online at Sora Sullied, and tonight I am playing the... Hell yeah! To turn my phone off. <clears throat> uh, Bene Gesserit, <laughs> consort to the house, maybe consort to somebody else pretty soon. Uh, Norma. Excellent. Key. Hello, I am Kisama, the cheese meister extraordinaire. You can find me on Twitter, at TrueKisama. And tonight, I will be playing Pado Reed, House Mentat. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, Ambrose. Hey, everybody. I'm Ambrose. My pronouns are he or they, and you can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling. You can also find me on Etsy at Neat and Co Designs. And tonight I shall be playing Lysander Aphelion, whose pronouns are he, him, the sword master of the house. Uh, Jared. I think Jared's muted. Uh, I think he just came back. Uh, Sean, you go. I am Space Lord PJs on the internet, and I do Space Lord things. Um, and tonight I will be playing Davos Blood, the smuggler, who apparently has to um, deep space several people now. <laughs> Only potential. <clears throat> okay. Uh, wait for uh, Jared to get seated here, and we'll get him introduced uh, properly. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry about that. Um, by the, my name is Jared. You can find me at the Real Life Jared all over the web. Um, and today I'll be playing Archibald, um, the long lost uncle that may or may not take the house. Never know. Excellent. All right. Uh, now for a short recap of the previous episode, Ambrose, if you would be so kind as to read the recap. Absolutely. Let pull it up because I did a silly thing and did not. Huh, and make it large for the eyeballs without the contacts. There we go. We open back in the Situation Room about six months after the situation on Gamon. Pardo is known to be on a very short leash, carefully watched by Davos and Gwilion. He describes the situation on the moon Snicker of Jabberwock and throws suspicion on Pardo. He accuses Pardo of conducting experiments with spice on members of our household. William concurs, revealing Pardo has gone looking for blackmail on Lysander. Pardo defends himself by saying everything he has done has been in service to the house. His activities, he says, has been essentially penetration testing and looking for weak spots in the house. He throws shade on Gwilion, accusing the face dancer of being the truly untrustworthy one. As they bicker, Omelas brings up the fragments of the Ixian probe. Pardo insists he was examining it to make sure it was well and truly dismantled so that no one could ever use it. Daphne, unconvinced that either man is a traitor, tries to take a middle road approach. She sets, shuts down the bickering and insists that she will need stronger proof of disloyalty than she's been presented. Out in the courtyard, Thea engages her two child charges in a mock social battle, a reflection of what we in the house have just been through. Masum is a little offended to be placed on an equal level with an apprentice who cannot even use the voice yet. They argue back and forth, which Thea does her best to ameliorate. She tries to get Masum to back down from bullying her and redirects them to a more collaborative training exercise. Back in the Situation Room, Omelas reveals that there is an uprising on Snicker, which has caused Ornithopter production to grind to a halt. Malcontents with high-grade weaponry have brought the workforce to a standstill. They refuse to meet with anyone except Daphne or Adelaide. Daphne is a little surprised that the House Secret Police or Commandos did not notice or take them out. It stinks of a trap to lure Daphne into the open. Gwilion suggests a plan to undermine them using the probe. Daphne says she's confident the plan can work without resorting to heresy. Omelas reveals that many of the insurgents are veterans of the house military, frantically loyal to the Duke and his brother. Daphne wonders if the cells could be turned against each other. It's possible, but it's also likely they have the backing of House Carol. The stakes are high on this one. 
Daphne doesn't want to act without more information, so suspends the meeting to go question Dr. Sloan, the former member of House Carroll who defected. He reveals that when Duke Federico and Beatrice died in a crash, it was his wife who accused House Carroll of being behind the assassination. But House Carroll denied involvement. The Lancerod sent their own agent to investigate, who concluded House Carroll was not involved. It appeared that the Duke's own brother sabotaged the Ornithopter. He was sentenced to life imprisonment. He speaks also about Alicia and her capture and interrogation, and his encounter with Dr. Rowan Bal Ballinger? Ballinger. Daphne picks up that he uses the doctor's first name, indicating some level of familiarity. Perhaps they were Souk students together? He reveals they had some plan to also use the Ixian probe, though he doesn't know the details. We shift to the garden, the prison facility near the equator, where a certain man rests, imprisoned for a crime he did not commit. Recently, someone has tried to break into the prison. It's a group of masked people. Their leader reveals that he is not here to kill the general. He wants the location of the House Cheshire Armory. They produce an Ixian probe and attach it to the general's head. He tries to bargain and the people who have kidnapped him resort to the probe. He resists the probe, though a few recent memories float to the forefront of his awareness and are <clears throat> replicated holographically in front of the group. Hmm, she says. Remember harder. As she turns the dial up. The pain only increases. The memory which now surfaces is of the time his brother died, which the holographic memory reveals. He did not kill his brother. This seems to satisfy the strangers who released the general from the probe. He collapses as the strangers leave, saying, House Cheshire's Atomics will find a new home soon. Back to the courtyard. Daphne continues questioning the doctor. He doesn't know anything about the plan to arm people against House Cheshire. He knows they were planning something big involving Alicia and the Ixian probes. By this point, Duchess Adelaide is feeling better and asks to see Masum and the Bene Gesserit tending him. Masum is allowed to stay in the room if he promises to behave. Adelaide charges Pardo, Lysander, and Omelas with defusing the situation on Snicker. Daphne's inclination is to send Gwilion and his spies ahead to infiltrate and discover what he can. As we continue planning, a light goes on at the end of the table. It's the house guards calling. Omelas steps out to answer. When he returns and informs the Duchess of what he has learned, she calls Lysander over. Pardo senses a rising tension and readies himself for violence. Before he can pull his weapon out, he finds himself with Lysander's weapon at his throat. If you are Pardo, she asks, then who comes knocking at Castle, Castle Cheshire's door at this hour? Panicked. He accuses everyone in the room of being face dancers. Thea interposes herself in between these belligerents and the children. The Duchess commands Pardo to reveal himself as house guards burst into the room. They part and reveal Pardo Weed. Daphne asks William how this question is resolved. Masum knows how to solve this. He produces the gift Pardo gave him before departing for Wallach and asks each Pardo what's in his hand. The newly arriving Pardo says he gave only good wishes. Masum confirms this is truly Pardo when he opens his hand to reveal nothing. 
To the false Pardo, the Duchess demands to know whose creature he is. He responds by going for the hidden weapon on his jacket, prompting Lysander to make use of the knife held to Pardo's throat. But the bodkin catches Lysander's arm as the false prop as the, as the false Pardo stabs himself. But the true Pardo has lost his memory for the last six months. The Duchess invites us into the war room in order to plan. The children are not allowed in, but Thea is on Norma's word. For her part, Thea tries to comfort Masum. He speaks, however, of wanting to find his mother. Sometimes he has visions of her alive and sometimes of her dead. We brief Pardo on what has been happening and the Duchess asks for his input on the ornithopter situation. When discussing the situation, Omelas reveals that many of the veterans who are creating problems are loyal to the Duke's brother. We could use him as a pawn, but that would risk returning him to heirship of the house. Daphne decides to speak with him before making any firm decision. It's time to go visit the garden. Speaking of the garden, Archibald is informed he has visitors, including his grandniece. He doesn't want to receive them in a dingy jail cell and arranges to meet in a courtyard. Excellent. Thank you for reading the recap. And thank you, as always, Rachel, for writing those ex uh, excellent recaps. Uh, all right, we'll get right, right into it here in just a second. Switching the music. All right. So I'm going to say that um, some time has passed between for someone, uh, for Davos specifically, if you want to be caught up to what's going on already and join the entourage. It just matters who is on uh, the garden, who is at the garden meeting with uh, General, former General Archibald. Uh, which, who of the entourage would uh, Daphne like to bring along? <clears throat> Uh, well, she's definitely bringing uh, Lysander. Um, and uh, yeah, certainly Norma. Um, Pardo in part so she can keep an eye on him. Because, you know, that, that <laughs> face dancer stuff was weird. Pardo's up yeah. to something. Uh, and we'd probably have to use uh, Davos's ship. Right. I'll catch you up, Davos, on what happened uh, in the last month or so that you spent on Arrakis after we finished this little scene. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you do, you were uh, advised of what recently happened at the castle, and you kind of caught the caught all of that at the tail end. Uh, you were kind of struggling to get back back to Jeverwalk from Arrakis, and you learned of like some deception that had been taking place for the last six to eight months, and Pardo was not Pardo, and you, your head kind of spun a little bit. Uh, so, uh, she, the the Duchess uh, bid you to fly her daughter and the rest of the entourage down to the equator where the, the garden is situated. And upon your return, she wants your official report about what happened there. Okay. We'll play that out here in, after this the next bit. But uh, uh, you were those of you who who went with uh, Lady Daphne are are there. You know the or ornithopter for House Cheshire are sitting behind you on the landing pad. You're being led up by a pair of guards uh, who bring out General, uh, former General Archibald. How do you uh, approach? Was that for us or for Archibald? Both. <laughs> um, me? Yeah. How do you react to one another? You have, after all, you haven't seen each other in over like 15 years. I would probably let them come to me, and when I'm and when I saw them, I'd be like, "My dear niece, how are you? It's been so long since you guys have come and visited." Uncle, it has indeed been a long time. It has. 
I hope you are being treated well here. As well as one might. I am a general, so I do have a little bit of a say when it comes to that stuff. That is good to hear. Is there a place we can speak with some privacy? Sure. And by and by private, me and you. Because I thought the whole entourage was with you. Oh yes. Uh, these I trust them, and they know what I'm going to speak to you about already. Okay. Of course. Uh, and I'm going to take him out to the courthouse, courtyard. Okay, yeah, it's a little bit of ways from uh, where you're situated right now on the landing pad. Uh, let's see. So where you're at right now is the, the current landing pad. You're going to go into the internal, they have like this interior garden. It's not like this, is, it's not exactly like a maze or anything like that. It's like this pleasant little place where you can sort of walk around in, in privacy and, and talk openly without anybody eavesdropping. Uh, you do notice, though, that there are some uh, locations up ahead, which is situated as a unloading area. And you hear currently there are like ground vehicles and hover vehicles returning back from the jungle. Uh, and the doors to the side of these uh, vehicles disgorge uh, an entire company of guards, uh, you know, and they kind of start setting up a line and the, the prisoners that exit the vehicles are completely suited up from head to toe. It seems like a lot of the flora and fauna that these prison, prisoners are made to harvest out and out there are potentially dangerous. So they have to basically wear space suits, it looks like, to, be, to engage them and harvest it and come back to the, the prison as part of their uh, penance, uh, you can say. And so those vehicles are arriving and making a little bit of noise and they're getting out and they're filing and they're taking the, 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 the reciprocals back into the this one portion of the, the facility. Uh, the hedges are not high enough that they can't see you like walking around on the inter interior gardens. And uh, you notice immediately uh, that some people who know you uh, see you openly walking uh, with what appears to be a noble, a noble woman and her entourage. Uh, do we recognize the noble woman? Yeah. Oh no. I'm speaking about like the prisoners of the of the of the garden oh. are seeing oh, General Archibald and you and your entourage like walking around in the garden uh, uh, grounds. So, I'm sure. How have you been, dear niece? It's been 15 years. You've grown so much. Thank you. Tell me. Tell me about yourself. What are your new interests? What are my interests? I suppose I'm quite boring. I live only for House Cheshire. She don't live for the house, in my opinion. She live for the people in it. Oh. Naturally. The house. The household. You can leave a house. You can, the house will always be there. You are correct. People there will not. So, what is it that you came here for? I cannot fathom that you have come here for free. No, I... I have indeed come here to ask a favor. A favor from your dear old uncle? Yes. And what might that be? I would like to ask you to help the house. Wow. That certainly isn't going to come free. I'm sure. I've been rotting in here for 15 years. I'm sure you you can put two and two together. 
Of course. There is unrest on the moon, Snicker. It is disrupting construction of our ornithopters. And it is being perpetrated by veterans of our military who are quite loyal to you. I see. Even in prison, I do. Even in prison, I have supporters. I wonder what they say about me nowadays. I'm not sure. Love to ask them one day. They do speak uh, quite complimentarily of your leadership and your uh, battle sense. Well. When I left, we went to prison. House Cheshire or is one of the bigger houses. I even worked with the emperor himself. So, not to, I guess, brag. Certainly. You, what do you want me to do? Here's the thing. You could probably handle this yourself. Why is it you? Why is it that you can't do it yourself? I am handling it myself. I'm finding the person who could help me solve it. Don't play coy with me. You could go down there just as easy as I could, and I and you and your counselors as well could go down there as well to handle this as well. I'm sure you have soldiers. Tell me. Certainly. We could, it? but uh, I have no need or wish to for this to come to bloodshed. I could certainly go there myself, but I would not have the pull that you would have. And you're not wrong. Even if you did try to invade, it wouldn't it would turn into a stalemate. And I do not want to turn our weapons on our own people. That's a very good point. Well, <clears throat> tell me, because right now you need me. Mm -hmm. And I would love to get out of this. Before you say shit box. Or which? So what do you come to offer? I am here to offer parole. Oh yeah? What role is that? No no no. Parole. You would leave this place in our custody, and if the situation is able to be resolved, you would be granted a very comfortable retirement as a free man. Well, here's the thing. I've been thinking a lot. All right. And I'm not stupid. You've danced around the subject or you just haven't brought it up. I know that if I'm pardoned, that I'm next in line for the, for the Duke. This would not be a pardon, it would be a parole. Can you repeat that in here yet? This would not be a pardon, it would be a parole. Parole. Hmm. So, in terms, tell me what the difference would be of being in this place and being out there 
under every eyeball. If you wish to return to life in the garden, I will not stop you. I'm just saying, it sounds like I'm going from, excuse my language, one dump to another. You would have your freedom. Within reason, obviously. And the thing is, is I <clears throat> and you're right. But I am a great general. And to a certain extent, you're right. Whether you believe it or not, you know what I did, or supposedly done. Whether you to believe it or not, I didn't do it. I believe the evidence is quite strong that you did. Are you trying to tell me that you are innocent? And I'm sure once, if I get out of here, I'll find the person that did it and prove my worth. Are you claiming to be innocent? Of course. I'm not going to tell you I did something that I obviously did not do. You say obvious, but it is a very different perspective to everybody else. But uh, if you can prove your innocence, I would certainly be quite interested in that. Well, let's take this one step at a time, right? Where are the rest of you uh, during this conversation? Are you staying with Daphne uh, and uh, the former general? Or are you staying back? How exactly are you? Uh, I imagine Lysander is probably close by. Yeah. Yeah, Lysander would be following behind because then he can see in front and if someone comes at them from behind he's the first person that they'll hit. What about Davos and uh, Pardo? And Norma? Does Davos know about the whole Pardo sh bullshit yet? <laughs> yeah, you've already been on that. Just That's staring him down like, really? <laughs> really? Really? Pardo... <clears throat> Without an expression on his face, is just looking at Archibald, looking back at Daphne, trying to figure out, like, one, is Archibald innocent, and two, is, would Archibald be a better leader than Daphne? And if so, what to do afterwards? Jesus oh. Christ, my dude. <laughs> really? One day back. What the oh, fuck right. is wrong with all of you people just going, fuck <laughs> Daphne, don't need Daphne now, the dude's here. Whatever. I'm loyal to the you house. Know what? I'm not loyal Davos like that. just I'm walks not... over to Daphne and I'm with you. And then just goes and tries to find <laughs> something to smuggle. That's what he's I mean, doing. like, I am going to clarify that Archibald is mortal and Daphne is younger. Right? Uh, and Norma will be sitting uh, more just the back of the group, but off to the side so she can see both sides' expressions. So, oh, okay, same thing. Kind of read the room. Okay. You're focusing on them and watching their interplay and just, you know, focusing, hyper-focusing on, on, you know, the nuances, uh, the minutia uh, between the, you know, the interplay between the, the uncle and, uh, uh, and Daphne. And uh, so some of you are aware of what's going on elsewhere and some of you are not. Uh, but it's like when, when it's around the time that you're like, oh, I, you know, what do you think of that? Like, uh, what, what do you... Uh, would you, I, would you need some time to decide or uh, what you said to him uh, that's around the time that you start hearing uh, yelling from beyond the uh, the hedges around you uh, near the unloading area in fact uh, and that the only first one to get to respond to this is Lysander because he made the rolls but uh, let me see You're currently uh, sitting here in this little space here. Just think of it as a small little zone, uh, this little abstract area here where there's like a little fountain and some hedges and stuff like that. 
And this is around the time when you uh, when you see that there's uh, these uh, these men in like uh, olive drab and orange highlights uh, emerging from uh, the hedges, and some of them are wielding uh, what appear to be like uh, shivs or knives or uh, like little batons that are normally used by the uh, the prison guards. The, and the prison personnel to keep everybody else in line. And you see, the, uh, Lysander, who is, you know, laser focused on protecting Daphne, immediately sees this danger uh, encroaching and prepare, has a moment to prepare and react. Uh, so you get to go first, uh, but then I'm going to have to spend some threat and have my, uh, my enemies go and back to back. Go, go ahead, uh, Lysander, what are your actions? Uh, finding the best spot for Daphne to be sheltered while being able to use her abilities if necessary and placing myself in between that shelter and the altercation. Okay. Yeah, you're Sorry, just like, I was trying to think here, of the word. <laughs> There's a pretty large uh, fountain there uh, close to the center, but it's like open on any side to, uh, to attack. So tactically, this is a bad place to be. Um, but you're luckily for you, you have others nearby that can, uh, you know, get in the way or uh, interact with the uh, your assailants. Mm. So you just you go to move to secure her somewhere outside of the garden. Uh, as far as zones are concerned, if you look to the left, there's like a little uh, makeshift uh, map there of a very oh. rudimentary sort of map mapping of the area. So you have the garden facility, which is where. All the inmates are housed. You have the landing pads, which connects to that. And then in a roundabout way, the interior gardens are connected to the landing pads and so on. The unloading areas where these uh, assailants are coming from. Uh, further beyond that is the main checkpoint, the front gates, and then the outside jungle forest. Uh, so you can, if you want to move, you want to take a move action, you can take, you can move yourself or an asset into an adjacent zone. Uh, if you wanted to keep the initiative, I believe you could spend up to uh, two momentum and then you can act again or have another asset under your control act again. Um, I have my, my troops, yes? Yes. Okay. This will be my first time actively using them, so please uh, <laughs> okay, no problem. Actually, let this me be the know. Time. The first time was in oh, oh. Shia. Actually, they died. <laughs> your your troop, your assets got killed. Oh, that's right. Thunder car, so that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can have a contingent of troops with you here, of course, but those original ones got off like six months ago. Okay. Yeah, I've got soldiers on my assets. Yeah, you can still utilize them. You can uh, you can basically have them perform actions for you, and they would basically have the stats of regular soldiers. So you can be like, hey, you, interpose between attack that target there, and they act basically on your turn. Uh, <clears throat> let me get you the stats for the soldiers under your command here very quickly. And in that case, I will let them do the altercation inspection slash double altercation, <laughs> and uh, I will stick right next to Lady Daphne's side. Very good. Okay, so you mm -hmm. have them. You have them go out and do the. the, the the, do the, the dirty, dirty work, yeah. And, yeah. Let me give you the stats here. There you are. Okay. Go ahead and roll. Uh, this is just because they're not major characters. You're basically just rolling one die for them. Uh, and they basically are rolling battle and duty at this point. So they have an effective target number of 12. So if you roll uh, six or below, or actually if you roll 12 or below, then you succeed at a test, in which case you can dispatch one of the assailants. Okay. I will do that with digital dice. So rolling one die for them? 
if I understood that correctly? Uh, yes. Uh, six. And that's good. Okay, so you got a success. Uh, are you using tactics uh, specifically to direct them to uh, to attack or like a specific maneuver or anything in particular that you're doing? Uh, let's see here. Yes, battle uh, focuses of tactics. Focuses of tactics. So that's actually two successes. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, and okay. Command over these two tokens here. And you start hearing the commotion coming, uh, becoming more and more clear uh, at the landing pad and at the uh, the unloading facility as more of these uh, inmates attempt to try to, uh, what seemingly try to take control of the landing pad and the ornithopter there. This is bad news. <laughs> because if they get control of the ornithopter, they're, they're likely to take off without any of you. Um, they don't seem to be focused on you though. Any, it seems pretty clear that they're taking this opportunity to get at the general. And one of them in particular kind of bolts over a hedge, scans the crowd in front of the, scans the entourage, sees uh, Archibald and it's like, General, your time has come. <clears throat> Obviously there are people here who are not fans of the uh, House Cheshire uh, secret police on, that was uh, utilized on Snicker. Uh, and here they come. So go ahead and roll uh, for the, your second. Uh, actually, you can roll for one of your assets. He succeeded wholeheartedly, so he interrupts one of the guys that are coming in and, and trying to engage with you directly, and he takes it. He, you know, he. Uh, let's see, that's two successes. I'm gonna have them roll for see what they get. They fail, so they actually get. Let's see, they get two. So he actually gets injured. You see one of your troops come up and like they get in and they interpose themselves and they they start getting into a knife fight and one of your guys like activates the shield belt and they start going at it these uh uh these inmates are not armed in the same way that you are they just have very crude implements to basically shiv you that's about it the, you obviously have more advanced weaponry at your disposal uh so the one one of them takes a wound uh, just a slash across the shoulder and like they're engaged with, with one another in, in battle right now and now I will have them, my guys, go. In the oscillation between the good guys and the bad guys, the enemy opposition force is going to move now. I'm going to have the first ones move in uh, with, with, try to basically bulldoze their way past Norma, uh, who's sort of in between them and uh, the general. Uh, general uh, Norma, you see one of these guys sees you and thinks you're like somebody's widow or whatever. Like, you, you know, you just came from a funeral, doesn't realize you're Ben and Jesuit. He just goes to like bowl you over. I need you to give me a uh, a battle or move, uh, whichever is your uh, best for you, uh, that would exemplify your quick list of movement. So maybe move uh, and whatever drive makes sense for your character as he's basically trying to like push you out of the way. Assuming, of course, you want to bar him uh, access to the general. <laughs> yeah, we want him to use him, so we want him alive. <laughs> so this will be duty. Okay, go ahead and roll. And this will be best He's three with Panabindu. That's going to determine what he needs to succeed Oh, at. God! Oh, wow, that's fantastic. All nothing. Um, I'm going to spend a determination point to make this work because, God, that was That's awful. awful. <laughs> this isn't terribly dangerous for you. I mean, these, these, I mean, well, these guys seem to be fairly well trained. You recognize Lysander, when you look at the way that they engage with your troops, you realize they're uh, similarly trained. These are former house troops as well. This is just a matter of Ben Jester of pride at this point to at least have gotten one success. <laughs> You got two successes, uh, so go ahead no, no, and roll. Uh, you uh, get uh, yeah, two. And get, that was under 20, ahead. so I didn't spend my point. Excellent. That's awesome. So you actually get two momentum out of that uh, because that would, he botched his roll, so he needed to hit a, a defense of two, and he botched it completely. So he goes to, like, bowl you over, and you instead just manage, like, uh, use his own force against him, you throw him into the hedges, and he's just like, what the hell just happened? You move too fast for him to register what just occurred. Um, I'm going to spend some threat and have the next one go, so he's off over here. I'm going to 
dot him to show that he was gone. This next one goes up against Davos. He's like, out of my way, old man. He goes to like slice at you with the with this uh, with this shard of uh, steel. It looks like cool. Um, cool. Uh, give me a battle roll and link that to whatever uh, drive makes sense for your character. That that'll determine the defense that he has to hit. Uh, let's go battle and we'll say duty since uh sure. he's uh looking out for his um retirement check um okay so that's uh 13 13 okay so that's your target number go ahead and roll uh your <clears throat> 20s you can use the sheet if you like it's already pre-programmed in if no you just hit i battle. have i have like awesome dice for these oh, d20 okay. games so <laughs> okay. um i need to roll under or over Honor, oh, honor under. Honor under. Uh, two successes. Let's check what their stats are because I know they're not, they're not put complete pushovers. Uh, let's see. Battle. Five and five. So ten. I rolled a five. So they got one success. Cool. Uh, so, yeah. You, they do, they fail to actually hit you. Your, your defense proves to be more effective than uh, what this guy. He's just, he's, he's Pretty basic as far as uh, an attacker's concerned. He just he did, he <clears throat> underplays like your importance, and you're like fuck out of the way, old man. He tries to like shiv, and you're like uh-uh. And then he looks at you again, like oh, you're one of those guys. Okay, sure. <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Would we have? Uh, okay, I'll ask it on my it's turn. Your turn. It's wait, yeah, actually, you are you have the highest move, so you would be next in. I uh, do. Initiative. Wow. Okay. Um. Cool. Uh, does Daphne carry a shield? That's a good question. Uh, I don't know if yes. she does. Yes, that is one of my assets. I got a personal shield. Cool. Just wanted to make Very sure. Wise. Otherwise, he was going to slap that on you. Um, yeah, his name is Lysander. <clears throat> <laughs> also that. Uh, he's going to activate his personal shield um, if he didn't already have a chance to activate it. And then... Cool. Uh... Want to ask a question? Want to use my scrutiny uh, ability to ask the GM one question about the scene? Okay. Sure. Um, Go for it. <clears throat> do this? Do these just look like? Wait, these are prison. All right, is this a prison break type situation, or are these like Both. assassin? Okay. Okay. So the, trying to kill the general and take advantage and grab this, the owner thought to get out. It's just bad co coincidence that we're here at the time of some sort of. Prison break, yeah, basically. you kind of put it together that uh, General Archibald is sort of a celebrity here and one that's kept like behind the you know the curtain, so most people don't get to see him, but they know that he's here somewhere, and this is one of the few rare times that he's actually like outside. So like, oh shit, we have an opportunity to kill this guy. Let's take it now. Okay, so and we need to get the fuck out of here. It sounds like and get at least <laughs> get to the Ornithopter first. Yeah, they. You see them like you hear shouting and gunfire coming from the ornithopter landing pad. So you, and that your ornithopter landing pad. So it's like, oh shit, they're trying to take our ship and they're trying to kill this guy. Like, oh shit, we got, we got have to, we have to uh, prioritize what we're gonna do here. Um, cool. So if he'll allow it, he will try to move the general as an asset and uh, to stealthy, stealthily move him towards the ornithopter to that sounds like uh moving cautiously go ahead and give me a move roll mm -hmm. if you succeed then yeah basically jared gets a free turn to, to two successes to two successes perfect all right jared uh you see dallas like with me old man like he grabs you by the shoulder and he tries to like escort you out uh, out of that area uh where do you want to take him and uh where where do you want to move uh Archibald. I would say move the safest route, it looks like, avoiding mm. dudes and try to put Lysander between us and anybody. I would try to get behind the soldiers that Lysander's Lysander is. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> between me putting Lysander between me <laughs> and the people. <clears throat> You're kinda of stuck in a in a rock and a hard place situation because the fighting is going on just just below you in the unloading area, and the landing pad, which is around the corner, is also under fire as well. So you're kind of like stuck in the middle. Where are we on that little map? 
Uh, right here, where I'm pinging the map. The interior gardens, got it. So, and those little connectors are the pathways to where we need to go. Precisely. Okay. To the different zones. And where is the? Oh, it's on the landing pad. Got it. So it's just right around the yeah. corner. Got it. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> so if you want to move into the landing pad, you can start heading that way. That would be the area that. Uh, yeah. Uh, Davos would suggest moving towards. Okay, That's it's where gonna I would take go. two moves, so you both get moved over here then. Um, that's good. That was a smart move. Let's see, you don't have a dot yet because you haven't technically gone yet. Uh, okay, so that was your turn. That was good. Now, unless you can keep the initiative and let somebody else go on your side, uh, or you can go spend a point of determination and go again, or you can pass it to the to the enemy now. Uh, I'll pass it to Daphne. <clears throat> okay. So if you would have to spend the two momentum that you just earned uh, from the from uh, the previous roll, uh, so that one of you can act uh, in this turn. Okay. So you're good to go, Daphne. You're up. You just got moved up in the initiative. <laughs> yep. Uh, Daphne is going to call out to Lysander. We're evacuating to the ornithopter. Cover the retreat. Ah, do you have a uh, direct as a talent? Do I? I do not. Okay. Even if she uh, didn't, Lysander would thought, probably though. listen. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's fine. And mechanically, if you have the direct talent, you basically get to issue a command to somebody else, and they get an action on your turn. Uh, so they can act out of turn essentially, and then if it becomes their turn. They can act again. Uh, well, I, something you want to consider perhaps for later for, for this exact reason I, I know uh, what I'm saving my points up for <laughs> next <laughs> uh, you see par uh, you see Davos and Archibald move quietly like underneath and like to disappear behind the hedges and uh, presumably making their way out to the uh, the landing pad where the ornithopter is situated uh, do you want to follow behind them in, in, in that same in similar fashion or do you want to try like do the opposite and like attract the, the enemy's attention this way or what have you oh i think if i try to uh play bait lysander would kill me <laughs> that's why i asked <laughs> yeah yeah you would <laughs> uh i think that's why i'm gonna do it <laughs> okay acting boldly uh, uh excellent yeah so uh i am going to scream uncle wait and run in mm. a so in a separate direction from the one that Davos went, but that would still sort of get me uh, ornithopter word. Excellent. So you're moving towards the unloading area instead. And this Lysander's like, wait, where are you, where are you going? <laughs> uh, at the at the sound of that, you see a lot of the some of the the your assailants look at each other and start veering off towards Daphne. Um, that basically allows you, Daphne, to move one of their tokens to a place of your choice. Oh. Uh, so you can you can potentially move one of the their assets on the landing pad towards the unloading area, or conversely, you can have one of them chase after par, uh, Davos and Archibald or what have you, or have them chase into you into the unloading area, whatever you want to do. Um, well, I mean, like they should probably be chasing me, right? Because that's why I'm like, like this is like the whole thing. Yes and no, because we can construe it to say like. Hey, grab her too, you know, and then like somebody else goes and, and moves uh, against you, you know. It just depends on how we want to play it out. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I I will try and like get one to peel off towards me. Okay. Uh, from the landing pad or from the garden specifically? Oh, I see. Um, from the landing pad because that's mm. where they're headed, and so that should probably be reasonably clear of bad guys. It's actually kind of a wise move. All right, so they're basically moving from the landing pad towards where you're at, which means they're going to interact with Davos and Lysan and uh, excuse me, and Archibald on that. Uh, well, not in exactly at that juncture. They have one other juncture to go. They're on their way though. Okay, so Hot. now we. That's awesome. Uh, you already you kept the initiative, so now it's the bad guy's turn. Okay. And the next person to go is Lysander. 
All right, so I'm going to have these enemies go next. Uh, specifically the one that got injured last round, he's going to roll against your asset. Go ahead and roll for your soldier, your troop asset, uh, Ambrose. Uh, you just want one die, and you want to roll 12 or below for success. Okay. Do your house troops... Oh, no. no! Do your house troops have a quality number? Does it say zero on, on the sheet, or does it say one or two? Excuse me, my soul's breaking into tiny pieces right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what, what, what are you looking for again? <laughs> When you look at the asset on your sheet uh, that says house troop, does it have a number associated with it? Like zero, one, or two? I have to pull it up because I've got tiny screens, so... Oh, oh okay, no worries. The quality uh, is kind of important. It has a zero next to it. Ah, okay, so it has it gets no automatic successes then. When it's engaging and what it's doing so and it just and you just roll the complication that means you can either pay me two threat to ignore the complication and they just basically uh eat whatever damage they're coming to or they eat damage and they get a complication on top of it <laughs> um oh decisions decisions you're good at them <laughs> I will pull a Tyler and give you threat. Ooh. Okay. Um, so that means okay, so I get two threat. Yay. Alright, so let me give myself blood blood. That means you get two more. You already owe me three, so you're up to five now. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll use them, sure. I'll buy some extra dice. Why not? I'll go ahead and wipe out three of those that you owe me. And I'll use them against you, against your asset here. So that means he's going to, instead of rolling one die, they're going to roll three. Because now you see your, your your troop is like fighting them. And you see the two of them gang up on them. And uh, just as they're, they're encroaching on their position, their shield starts fizzing in and out. Like, and that's no. when they strike. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah all sides they encounter a complication as well which we're just going to use the remaining threat that you owe me for to wave it off but they do get a success which means they get injured now doom. so much doom <laughs> yeah so you see what what happens now is your your guy gets shivved from both sides uh, as these two are moving in against them and they just take them out completely uh, like, like just, he just goes down in a in a, in a palisade of blades and blood, uh, screaming to the ground. Uh, uh, I think you went first out of order, Lysander. So uh, we're gonna, I guess we're in order of move scores. We're gonna go Norma and then Archibald and then Pardo. Uh, but after your after the enemies go, now it's your your side's turn. So it is Norma. Norma, what do you want to do? Uh, Norma is going to make it, or book it for the Ornithopters and leave a cleanup for Lysander and say, uh, I'll check the pads. You clean up here. Oh, shoot. Okay. Um, if you're, the, you, mechanically speaking, it's two moves away. You could mm -hmm. move, and uh, depending on how well you do, you could use momentum to keep the initiative and then go again. And that would get you one mm -hmm. step. You would basically bolt past Davos and Archibald and encounter the, the one uh, mook that uh, Daphne moved uh, previously. <clears throat> uh, what would the move check be? Because I have nimble to reduce the difficulty in uh, duels or skirmishes, uh, physical objects. It would be a two. By two. Um, I was gonna say standard two difficulty. Yeah. So it there's hedges and there's like a, there's a chaotic battle taking place like between here and there. So yeah, you'd have to like navigate that. Oh, uh, with nimble that would reduce that to zero. So basically, any nice. successes might be momentum. I, I mean, as long as you don't roll three uh, <laughs> complications. Yeah. Like you almost did a few moments ago. Sure, go ahead and roll. Yeah. <laughs> Not being stealthy, and that's three hey, that's successes. Pretty good. Well, two wow. successes because it's replacing one with Pranabindu. So two successes. 
Excellent. So you got two successes. That's two more than that's one extra than you needed. So you get uh, one in the momentum pool that you can pull at. All right. So you get moved to this place and. Well, actually, you'd be on the same uh, unless you want to throw me a point of threat, in which case you could use your remaining momentum and that point of threat. I basically move, keep the initiative and then move adjacent uh, one uh, zone to towards the No, I'm path. good on giving you threat. I started this game giving you those three. <laughs> I'm good. Good call. All right. Excellent. Okay. Uh, now let's see. We're going to go with Archibald. So I'm in the shadows with Archibald with uh, Davos, correct? Davos, yeah. Okay, so... The Norma just sprinting, like, coming up near where you're at, near your position. Can I only use one ability per turn? Um, yeah. You use, a, like, a talent, you mean? Yeah. Um, let me, give me a minute here. Yeah, a talent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go ahead. What are you do? What are you using? So I'm going to use, um... Um, master at arms, uh, basically at the start of a battle or anything like that. Um, represents a melee weapon or a unit of troops. Due to your prowess, you may spend one momentum turn to improve that asset's quality by one for the next conflict in the scene. Oh, okay. So that an asset can be a thing or it could be a person. So you can potentially increase the um, the quality of Lysander's remaining soldier <clears throat> on the field there. Uh, the token that's just south of Pardo's token there in the garden. Yep. Uh, increasing it from zero to one, which means they get an automatic one success in attacking or defending or whatever else they do. That's what I'm going to do. Excellent. Uh, what does it say to do? Does it say to give you to make a check or you just initially... Let me see. That's wrong one. Uh, um, uh, select a single asset that represents a weapon or a unit of, of troops due to your prowess. You may spend one momentum turn to improve the asset's quality by one for the next conflict in the scene. It doesn't say any, any rolls or anything like that. Just that I have to spend one momentum. Well, okay, and one momentum's what you got, so that's yep. perfect. All right, so we'll take this momentum out of here, and you can proceed with your with your action. Uh, if we're going to change that one asset into uh, a, essentially a quality one, I'm just going to put it here in the red circle. This is a reminder. So anything that that character does uh, essentially gives it gets an automatic net one success on top of everything else. So if that's not a bad idea. Uh, just you want to describe how that this plays out like uh does he like make eye contact or use like the secret battle language of the house to, like signal to that soul to that uh, that trooper like hey you know do this or you know kind of. my lead. okay <clears throat> so what i'm going to do is he is a general and he mm -hmm. honestly has a commanding presence so he's going to look over there and he's going to basically salute and give him like um, a look saying, fight till your last breath. Mm. Okay, you communicate with the secret eye language of your house uh, to, to the, the trooper as you're leaving with Pardo, like, you know, protect them with your life. And he, like, you instill this uh, uh, this fervor in the, in this soldier who sees and makes eye contact with He knows who you are. And when he he's being he feels like he's being like imparted this this sacred mission. So when he looks back at the at the you know uh, your assailants that are moving in closer, he his he redoubles his uh, his efforts and moves right into to defending uh, Daphne and the rest of them. Uh, excellent, w well done. And mm -hmm. I think that would call for. Uh, let's see. Unless you want to spend two threat and keep the initiative, it's going to go back to them. In which case, I'm going to have some of my friends on the landing pad take shots at the the prison guards. Let's see. We got roughly the same thing. Ten to twelve. I got one. This, two. Is this, uh, this is my thing, correct? Confused. 
Uh, it's on your on, on your initiative. You can if you have two initiative. If you have two momentum, which you don't currently, okay, gotcha. Uh, you can spend that and keep the initiative to go again or to have another person go on your side. Um, you could alternately spend a point of determination if what you're doing uh, has something to do with your drives. If you have a statement, you can use your uh, determination point, and that basically gives you an extra action that you can do something else on your turn. So if you wanted to, for instance, like shoot at the guy in the next zone or whatever, you can do that. Uh, but you'd have to spend a point of determination to do it. Or you could give me two threat, which acts as momentum, and you can more or less do something similar. Give the, the, the turn to somebody else on, on your turn. On your um, on your side, I should say. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> but no takers. I'm going to go ahead and have them have these guys roll for some fireworks. Uh, okay. One success. Yep. Okay. So one of the guards on the on the ornithopter pad eats it because he gets basically jumped by two at a time. Uh, you see one of them grabs him from behind. It's like, what? <clears throat> and one of them, like, stabs him with something. I'm like, ugh. He just slumps to the ground dead. Bypasses his armor. And now it's it's uh, Pardo. The master mentor. Hmm. On the one hand, You're the strategist, so this is, your, this is your opportunity to play tactics, if you wish. Tactics are fine and all, but I'm thinking strategy. A long term, term strategy. <laughs> okay. If I were to fight alongside Lysander, that would askew suspicion that may have been there true. previously. So you're so, thinking about yourself instead of your your house. That's good. I'm Roll thinking of whatever it is that you're doing. The house. Sure you so are. So I would like to <laughs> shimmy Go a ahead. bit and get in position to defend Lysander from these two that are still over here ah. if they charge this way. I mean, Do you makes... openly... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, just it makes sense for Pardo uh, if he thinks that the best thing for House Cheshire is for him to be the Mentat. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. That's kind of a skewed way of thinking about it, but that seems very selfish. I would probably say power would be the accompanying drive. Ah, uh, yes, power and I am gaining control. I'm ga I am... Destroying a thing, so I'm controlling. A thing. <laughs> Excellent. Which means, if you wanted to spend a point of determination, you could. Uh, if you wanted to use a, a skill to basically just create a trait like protected onto Lysander, then yeah, you would basically use that to reduce the difficulty of any uh, combat roles engaged with, the, with you know the, those immediate assailants. If you wanted to do that, or you could spend a point of determination and just make it happen. Uh, if you wanted to go that route. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Decisions, decisions. I <laughs> would like to roll a battle power to protect oh. Lysander, generating momentum to create a trait of protected on Lysander. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Uh, mechanical way of doing it. Of saying that, that works for me. Yeah, go for it. All right. And using a focus of short blades. Oh, no. wow. No. Nope. Now this would be where the determination point can come into play because mm -hmm. you could reroll both of those dice, or you can just mm -hmm. turn one of them into two successes. Just turn it into two successes, yeah. Excellent. And the, the, what, the, you want to create like a protected trade or something like that? Create protected on Lysander. Make it more difficult Excellent. for others to attack. Okay. See, I got your back. Not for wholesome <laughs> reasons, but I do. You got you got Excellent. my back with like a, a knife or something? Yeah, your back is safe holding a knife. <clears throat> your back is safe I'm making sure of it. Excellent, well done. Um, okay, so you spent the determination point, and you got your your two successes. You succeeded at doing that, and you got protected as a trait. Uh, did you want to pay me more threat, uh, or do you have another determination point you want to spend to go again? I have spent enough threat for one lifetime. No, uh... <laughs> <Fair> <laughs> no problem. 
Uh, one of these will we will uh, try to take a swipe at you, and the other one is going to. I'm going to spend two threat for them to keep the initiative, and they're going to go again. Okay. But, um, so this one's going to move up and attack you, and the other one's going to chase after Daphne as well. So he's going to go for the interior gardens, and he's going to meet up with... He's basically going to try to chase her down in the in-between place between the uh, interior gardens and the unloading area. Okay, so he's going to move. This one's going to attack. Uh, give me a battle roll, uh, Mentat. Let's see what I get with this guy. And this is automatically, oh, oh, wow. Okay, so you got three successes. How many successes did I need? How much momentum has been generated? You generated one momentum uh, just now because you, uh, well, actually two because you have protected. So yeah, you not only uh, deflected this this one assailant's attack, but you actually managed to put him off uh, off balance. Uh, you're you know fight. You're going against one another like. Uh, blades in hand and you know he's like coming at you high and you're moving back and keeping yourself steady and you me moving mechanically uh, you kind of move around the uh, uh, the fountain that's there and you, you kind of keep him th you're playing that game basically where you're going yeah. this way and he's <laughs> and I would like to use that two momentum to create a negative trait on this one in particular of over aggressive oh. so we can oh. use that excellent okay mm. Like that. Excellent. All right. This one's got a thing attached to them as well. Very good. Well, good use of traits there. All right. So that now, now all of his uh, uh, attacks go are negative one effectively, and then and vice versa. Okay. Well done. Uh, now that those guys have gone, it's back to Davos at the beginning of the round. Davos. <clears throat> Davos is gonna. He's if you've seen one spaceport, you've seen them all. These uh, narrow, winding tubes of tubes. Um, yeah, pipes and shit under like scaffolding, whatever. He's just gonna try to navigate through and take the uh, the general with him towards the or ornithopter to try to take control of it. All right. Cool. Um, go for it, man. Two successes. I'm gonna try to sneak two successes. That's yeah. more than enough. I almost just got rolled for one. I got a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we see Lady Daphne running down the halls, or is she in the exact opposite direction? She's. Uh, so look when you look at the little map uh, facade on the left-hand side of the screen. You see where it says Interior Gardens. Yep. That's where you just left. Yeah, you're just north of that here. Daphne went the other direction. So, yeah, you saw her bolt, but in the opposite way of where you're going. You're going towards the landing pads. She seems to be heading towards the unloading area, where actually the majority of the chaos started. Uh, right, and you start probably would have up. heard her yell because she was intending to be heard. Yeah. Okay. So you're actually at the landing pad now, I think. Or actually, if you're moving subtly, that means you're basically moving right here where this guy is. And you're going to encounter him before Norma does. Unless you want to pay threat and go again, in which case you can uh, direct uh, yourselves towards the, the landing pad and bypass them altogether. I just need to give you one threat since I have a momentum. Oh, yeah, you can do that. Uh, I'll do that. So Actually, you have... That. You, I think you have two. Oh, uh, wait. He used two momentum just now, didn't he? Yeah, and I just generated an extra momentum. So I'd, if we don't have any extra left, I would just have to give you one. So. Uh, okay. I get one from you then. Okay. Fair enough. I'll do that. All right. So you get to keep the initiative, and you get to go again, which means you get to. Do you want to move him towards your position, or do you want to move yourself towards the landing pad? Um. I've been trying to hustle him along with me, so uh, trying to sneak him through uh, 
smuggler style. Mm -hmm. So I'll let him go to see if he what he does. If he takes okay, yeah, and that way he gets the sort of pop scotch yep. to the orthopter. Gotcha. Okay, <clears throat> that works. Excellent. All right, now the enemy will go. Actually, uh, goes down here with Archibald and Pardo. Okay. All right, so the enemies are going to go. Uh, the now that it's been like two rounds, roughly, the 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 guards are actually starting to react to what's going on, and the ones from the main facility start lining the uh, the walls with stunners and start taking aim. Uh, the ones on the on the pad start returning fire. One gets a one of them bullseyes, and the other one gets a complication. It was a net twenty. Uh, so you see, one of them just misses outright his gun jams, and one of them runs up and jams his knife in his face. Uh, the other one gets bullseyed by one of the guards, so he's out. Bam! And the other one... Yeah. So that's what's happening there. Uh, let's see. This one's screwed here. Having technical problems. Alright. And... Who's next? Soldiers... Bad guys, bad guys. Oh, this guy's gonna take him out. Try. Net 20 again. Wow. Nice. Okay, so these guys are just bungling uh, one another. He drops his knife and the other one gun jams. Uh, no spending threat this time to keep the initiative, so now it's back to Lysander. <laughs> He's going to internally groan about Daphne. Heading off. <laughs> Damn it. And he's gonna <laughs> just, he's gonna head off in that direction as well. Okay. Let's see here. Don't worry, I've got you. Hey, where'd you go? <laughs> <laughs> Undock these guys here. Okay. Okay, oh, I think this guy just went. All right, so, all right, which uh, in which zone would you like to move? Uh, did you want to move towards uh, Lady uh, Lady Daphne? Yes. Towards the unloading area. Okay. You see that there's actually somebody there, like giving chase already. Uh, so if you wanted to, you could spend uh, a point of determination to effectively get an extra turn. Uh, after your move. So if you want to move and then attack uh, this uh, this guy who's like trying to run Daphne down, you could do that if you wanted to. I do like this plan. Okay. I shall. I'm down to zero determination points. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> so I ran there and I do I do the stabby stab with the long blades. So mm. um will be battle using my focus and duty, of course, for my drive. Using focus, yes. Really? Oh. Bastards. You got a complication, you say. <laughs> I rolled okay. a 20 and a 14. So you got one success. Uh, this guy does not get a success. So he, he does, you can effectively kill him, but the, there is going to be a price to pay for this because as, as you just noticed, he rolled a complication, which only can be driven away by a uh, paid threat, or if you have momentum, you can, I believe you can spend two to get rid of one. Uh, let's see, Ooh, I'm gonna add threat, actually. That's one of my options. I'm gonna go ahead and just give myself a little threat. What? <laughs> unless unless you'd like to take something else as a complication, like your shield belt malfunctioning, or uh, he's not, your blades get stuck in his chest, and it's like you're, you're going to have to spend a round getting them out. Or like that. <laughs> oh my god, that's actually kind of funny. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I would like to get stuck. You're just, you're overzealous. You just run this guy down <laughs> and skewer him, and you end up like knocking him flat onto the ground, like, ah, okay, and oh shit. <laughs> Knives are stuck in his blood. In, in his like he went into in between the uh, the, the uh, 
the rib cages, and then they get stuck on something, and you're just like trying to pull them out. And you look up, and Daphne's still like just bolting towards the uh, the landing pad. And you're like, wait. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, my minions will go now. Uh, I'm gonna focus on the landing pad situation since since that's starting to get hairy. Um, let's see. Just roll defense. Roll attack. It gets geeked. All right. So this another one of these guards gets surprised and gets completely whacked by another guy behind him. Uh, he comes up and just like electrifies him with a stun baton and just zaps him to the ground. Um, not spending a threat to keep the initiative on that one. So now it's it's down to Norma. Norma is Norma continuing continuing on to the uh, uh, landing pads to the doctors. Okay, are you just going to straight up move, or are you going to try to, like, generate momentum and, like, keep the initiative and make it to the landing? <clears throat> well, uh, like One I said, uh, doing the nimble bit to reduce the difficulty ah. by two for the rolls, yeah. Oh, okay, go for it. Yeah. And... Oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, so you yeah. have one more, one more momentum into the pool. Uh, you're, sh I think you're short one. Um, oh, no, no, you so. get three. Huh? Yeah, because oh, difficulty no. zero. Yeah, so you actually get. Two. Yeah. Then. Yeah, so you get, you get, your, you can spend your two to keep the, the, the initiative. And you have one momentum left in the pool. Um, and you want to just uh, you want to just make it to the landing pad? Yeah. Excellent. Uh, you zoom past these old geezers and you just go <laughs> jump over the hedge. And right there in front of you, you see uh, two dead guards and one dead inmate as they're like battling on the ornithopter pad for the control of the uh, of the vehicle. That's essentially your turn. And all right, all right back to the enemy. Uh, there's still some. Uh, you're kind of all alone here, with, with the exception of one of Lysander's soldiers, and he sees his commander run off in, in chase of uh, Daphne. So uh, he can conceivably go on on the next go around here. But uh, my enemies are going to try to move against him and surround him. He's the one though that has plus one. So this one is going to be a little bit more difficult to take down than the others. So he's going to roll attack. Defense. They both bungle it, but because he has a plus one and he has a shield belt, he's effectively a plus two difficulty to hit. He's fine. I'm not spending momentum, so now it is the Lady Daphne's turn. Uh, yeah, I am going to continue to the landing pad. Um, are there any of the dead attackers within arm's reach? Yes, I'm going to say yes, absolutely. Cool. You're in that zone, so you can access anything on that zone. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna grab uh, one of the dead bodies mm -hmm. and bring it with me. Excellent. Did you want to? Uh, so, if you want to do that, you can actually try to generate some momentum, or you can pay me some threat, and you could use that momentum to keep that initiative. So, not only are you moving one uh, zone, but you're also acting once you get into that zone, which is pretty much exactly what Norma just did. Um, so if you have one momentum, you could spend a give me a threat, and then you can keep the initiative and and then perform what what action, what next action you want to perform. How how much threat do you have right now? I have uh, one, two, three, four, five general threat and individual threat for one individual threat for Davos and two individual threat for Lysander. Uh yeah, I'll I'll, I'll pay threat. All right, it only costs one. So I'll give you one personal threat for that one. And you can go ahead and perform another action once you get to that zone. Uh, what do you want to do? You want to grab a weapon? No, I, I want to grab one of the people who are attacking us. Oh! Like one of their dead bodies. Uh, because I want to know who these fuckers are. Oh, I see. And so okay. the, the thought is, like, grab one, and then when we get to the ornithopter, like, look over him for any sort of, like, identifying articles. I see. Okay, interesting. Yeah. I, interesting idea. Um, yeah, you go down and you look over this this one down here that's uh, near Norma at the edge of the landing pad. You kind of slink over and check him for accoutrement. 
Um, you don't have to make a observation check in this particular case unless you really want to get extra details, but uh, you start checking like his his outfit and he's, he's a standard prisoner, but un underneath like the, the large um, base where normally a, a helmet would come down to protect him from uh, the flora fauna stuff that they're pulling in from the jungles, uh, you see that there is a, um, he has like a, uh, uh, a tattoo of the armed forces that belong to the House Cheshire. Okay. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Reminds me. So that's your turn. Now it's the bad guy's turn. You see, at this point, you see the ones that are on the on the landing pad go now, and you see the uh, over the hedges. Uh, something gets lobbed onto the landing pad, and this. Um, the smoke, seemingly the smoke starts to spew all over the place. It's just like, it just kind of explodes. And it's kind of, it looks like very fine dust, but then after a short breeze blows in and starts moving the stuff around, you realize that this isn't like regular smoke or anything like that. This is pollen. And like the airtight seal that these prisoners have with their helmets and such protect them from this pollen. You, on the other hand, are not protected which is why I need uh, Norma and uh, Lady Daphne to give me a discipline check. Difficulty three. Jesus. Oh, goodness. Uh, so what is this for? This is a discipline check. It's basically like your ability to control your body. So if you have body control as a, as a focus, you can use that as a as a specialty for this particular role. Uh, what they're basically doing is that they're utilizing the flora fauna stuff that they harvested out in the jungle as a weapon to paralyze anybody who's not prepared to deal with that stuff. They're obviously prepared to deal with it because they're in their, their suits and they just came back from the working those fields. So they're using them against the, the facility guards here and anybody else who happens to be in the area. It's like this purplish sporish stuff that just kind of spreads out everywhere. All right, uh, I'm going to use duty, and I do have Prana Bindu conditioning. Excellent. Roll it. Same for uh, Norma. Go ahead and roll that uh, discipline check. Since you're the two closest. Yeah, Prana Bindu as oh. well. So. Mm. Okay, uh, I'm going to reroll that. Re -roll that. <laughs> Prana <laughs> Bindu. Thank goodness for Prana Bindu. Look at that. Wow. Right on the money. Oh, Fuck. no. Would you like to pay me two threat? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> I thought you might. All right. Wow, I'm racking up that threat. Okay. So you, uh, your prana bindu conditioning takes over. However, one success is not enough to uh, keep this from uh, taking control of your body. Norma, on the other hand, the Reverend Mother is com in complete control of her faculties, and as soon as the spores hit you, you feel the, the nerve endings start numbing, uh, and it starts working its way in, and you just like hyper-focus down on the molecular level, and you just in make it inert in your body. Daphne, on the other hand, is not quite as skilled, and although she doesn't manage to fall on her face and get hurt, uh, or run to any other sort of complications, you are paralyzed. From head to toe, as you as this, these spores latch onto you, you're just gonna like uh, as you're examining this prison, you're just like, uh, uh, and your all your muscles start tensing up and locking up, and you, you just fall over. And that's where we're gonna go on break. We'll pick this right back up as Shit. soon as we return. We'll return in ten minutes, everyone. That uh, it is currently 9:46 p.m. Eastern time. We shall return at 9:56 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Wait, cool.
and we have returned back to the battle uh, where last we left our crew they were in the midst of fighting some inmates that were planning a breakout and simultaneous assassination of former general archibald and they were in the in the in the midst of trying to acquire their house cheshire's ornithopter in the process as part of that gateway and they had utilized uh, some spores that they had harvested out in the jungles of a jabberwock and used them on the the people on the landing pad and one of them was lady daphne who succumbed to uh, the uh the substance known as find it Zyroloft, and uh, could, was paralyzed Zyroloft. <laughs> And uh, she succumbed to uh, its effects and fell fell onto the edge of the uh, landing pad. And now we continue uh, with her having just gone. Uh, we're going to switch to the enemy. We're now uh, poised to take control of the, the landing pad. Uh, I'm going to spend some threat, though, now that we're here, to have them go uh, consecutively. And I'm going to use uh, the last of. Let me spend a point from Davos's threat. Uh, since he, this is going to affect him in particular, I'm going to have one of them go here on the landing pad, and the other one's going to take aim at the general. As they're coming up uh, and you're going towards the, the landing pads, uh, they're still scanning for the general. Um, so they're going to try to track him down and shoot him. Uh, Archibald, I need you to give me a move check uh, to see if they don't spot you. <laughs> he's going to roll discipline, and if he succeeds, he's going to take a shot at you. Okay, um... What do I need to roll? Uh, this is a move roll, and this is basically just you trying to hide yourself. So, uh, this isn't for your house or anything like that. I would, I would mm -hmm. presume this would have something more like to do with like power or the uh, the obscuring of truth. The fact that you're making your way over to the to the uh, landing pad, you can be you can team, you can uh, couple that with uh, your um, discipline or move. Yeah, I'll, I'll say move a score to try to uh, hide you hide yourself as best as you can. So I can either use power or truth, correct? Correct. <clears throat> Jarvis makes so sense for your character. Um, which one's better? Truth is. It's up to you. Whichever makes sense. Um, how many dice? Is it two? Yeah. Uh, so you basically would would click the skill, and it would ask you the corresponding drive to couple with that skill, and that'll create the target number automatically. It'll roll two two d twenties, and what you want obviously is to roll on or under that target number. Uh, if you roll a one, uh, then you get two successes. Using focus, no, I don't believe. Wait, what does focus mean? If focus is a specialization. So like if you have stealth as a focus, uh, if you just roll the skill, uh, the number of the skill uh, and below, then that also counts as two successes. So it's kind of like uh, having a focus is kind of like increasing your critical success rating from like a one to whatever the 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 number of the skill gotcha. is oh god that's well, terrible <laughs> you got nothing uh yep. okay so he spots you he he's like there you are and he's like uh and he's just like we're gonna finish this right now and he pulls out what what seems to be uh an, an obtained mola rifle from one of the uh, guards that was dispatched back at the landing pad and he levels that at you. You have no shield right now, so if he hits you, you're bleeding. Uh, he's going to roll 1d20. I need you to roll battle and uh, whatever drive makes sense for your character to not get shot. Okay. He got a success. <laughs> so you need, to be, okay. you need to get one or more successes to not get shot by this guy right now. So, battle... Um... I'm going to use Justice. Oh, okay. Two dice. Uh, this is not yeah, a I click your skill. I got, oh, I got a one. So I got Ooh, two successes. Yeah, yeah. Automatically successes. Excellent. You didn't roll a, a, a major complication, which is good. 
Uh, so yeah, you let's see. So you got a two, and he got the the one success. So you got one more than you needed. So you actually get a a point of momentum into the pool for the party. Good job. Yeah, you actually managed to definitely move out of the way, just as like he's like, blah, 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 and just auto firing it in your general direction, uh, just trying to bullseye you. Okay, uh, the other ones on the landing pad are gonna take a shot now. Uh, to dot that one to make sure he's notified that he's gone this one has not gone yet so he's going to move he doesn't see daphne he doesn't care he's mo he's more focused on getting the uh, uh the ornithopter pad uh, claimed for their side so he's going to fire on the one guard that's there he succeeds okay they both succeed so it's kind of like a draw so you see when he comes up with a maul pistol and fires it at him the other guy ducks out of the way and takes cover behind the chassis of the, the ornithop then they exchange rounds uh okay after archie uh, now it's archibald's turn uh, what would you like to do archie um so is this other guy near me yes they're in the same zone as you so yeah it's the the distance is relative you know okay I notice he's already seen me, correct? So I have noticed that he probably has a weapon or two on him. Yeah, undoubtedly. Is there any is there any way that I can maybe knock him out? Uh, yeah. Basically hand-to-hand -hand combat kind of thing? Yeah, I yeah. suggest you pray to the lords and ladies of fate who just raided the channel. Just nine raided us? Oh, thank you for the <laughs> raid. Hey, welcome, welcome to the madness. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. All right. Uh, go ahead and roll battle, and uh, whatever drive seems appropriate for uh, Archibald to basically melee this guy and try to take his weapon away. Oh, that's actually, be that's powerful. actually a good point. So whenever you target an asset that is being held by another character, you just need two successes to effectively disarm them or take it away from them if you target okay. that, that specific asset. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to use power. Basically, I'm just... Yeah. Dice. I'm going to use my strategy focus on this. I'm going to be thinking. Okay. I'm, yep. I'm going to be thinking in my head. Okay, if I hit him in the rib cage, I'll crack three ribs. Blah 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 blah. Like mm -hmm. that scene in Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. You know, like precisely Ooh. exactly the right places to hit him. I got oh, a hey. one and eleven. Jesus, that's three so successes. three successes. Wow. Uh, he got one success to defend himself, no shield, so you get two successes over his over his one, and that means you get two momentum. So you have three momentum sitting in the pool right now, which you can, you, you can spend to get additional dice on subsequent dice rolls. And uh, describe how you clobber the shit out of this guy and take his gun away. So I get... Okay, I'm like... When he tries to shoot me, I kind of like ducked in like this. And I'm like, oh god, I'm getting pissed off. And then I realize, as I'm I'm counting the bullets too, I'm counting the clip. And then he uh, he's out of ammo, and I, I take that time and I bull rush him. And then I take my fist, crack him in the ribs. Nice. Goes like this, and then I'm going to knee him in the gut. And then take my elbow and right on the, right on the spine, right there. Oh, that sounds painful. Yeah, you just like, rabbit punch him, get him down on the ground, elbow him in the face, uh, and then as he's getting up, you just give him another jab in the in the spine, and you should see the the gun, you know, clatter out of his hands, grab a hold of it. Now, you, now you're armed. Uh, you have a Mala rifle in your hands, so you can just train on him. Um, you have and momentum I'm, if you wanted to. You could spend two of that momentum to keep the initiative, give it to somebody else on your side, uh, or go again. Can I double tap this guy? Uh, actually, let me just get a. Let me just clarify that real quick. Hold on a second. If you spend two, you can shoot this guy with his own gun. I love it. Pretty much. <laughs> Do you have a determination point? Uh, I have only spent one. Did you already spend one? I thought you didn't spend any. Oh, no, that was a momentum. I spent a momentum. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I have so you... one determination point. Oh, okay. 
So if you wanted to keep the initiative, you can spend two momentum or you can spend a determination point and just go again. Uh, let me double check. I think if you keep the initiative, you have to elect someone else as part of the uh, initiative order, like on your side, essentially. I think it's a little bit different than just spending the determination point to go again. Uh, one second. Yeah, go ahead and spend the two. If you want to spend the two, I'll, I'll look it up later. Uh, you can go ahead and spend the two momentum and just, uh, if, yeah, if you want to just bullseye this guy with his own rifle, go right ahead. Go nuts. These guys have just moved, so you just require one one defeat to be done with them. So go ahead and uh, yep. roll battle. I'm going to do that. I'm going to spend the two momentum to uh, bullseye him. Right between the eyes. Yeah. Let me know what you get, and uh, do I need to roll anything? Uh, yeah. Essentially, it's just the battle roll. Oh, just the battle, battle roll. roll. Yeah. Do I it still not make do it? Is so. Do I put a drive <clears throat> behind it? Yes, always. Yeah. Always. Okay. And this is just going to be free money for you because. You ha he have effectively no resistance here to, you know, just shoot this guy in the face. He bungled his roll, so. Oh, you got a complication, oh. though. So that's that. So I you managed 20, to empty though. the clip. You the you you shoot and you bullseye this guy, but you just go a little overzealous with the the firing into him. Just da 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 da, da and like the you before you know it, the clip runs out and you're completely out of ammo. Oh. But he is gone. He's done. That's He's unfortunate. Done. God, sometimes <laughs> just overdo it. It's all right. It happened. Uh, now it's I mean, the opposition's turn. Our this aggressive is the first friend. time in years you've been able to hold a gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I wouldn't make uh, that sense. Our over aggressive friend is going to move against Pardo. Pardo, give me a battle roll, please. You don't have any uh, threat accrued, so I'm not going to throw any your way at the moment. But well, he rolled a one, so you need two successes here. Or one because made he's any overly aggressive. Easier or harder because of the aggressive. Yes. So because he's overly aggressive, as as you put it, uh, uh, you are going to get a uh, he gets a minus one. So essentially, makes it easier for you. Uh, you are going to get a uh, one success automatically, essentially, to uh, against his. So you just need to roll one additional success to defend against him. Oh, God. Oh, no. That's terrible. <laughs> All right. So Goodbye, your battle falls. <laughs> <laughs> your battle falls from seven to six. The way this works is no name mooks just need one uh, defeat to be done away with. Named characters, major NPCs, etc. cetera, uh, you need what are called what is called an extended success series of successes. <clears throat> uh, and if he had gotten two successes on you, and if it weren't for the trait that you uh, you put on him, he would have gotten two successes uh, just now for rolling a one, which means your your battle would have gone from seven to five. Not effectively, you could still use your battle at seven, but once your battle, effectively your hit points in battle, get to zero, you're finished. You're, you have to roll to resist defeat. Uh, so he does manage to like cut you along your uh, the seam of your uniform and draws blood, and he kind of faces off against you in like this mili you know, this trained military pose where he basically hides the blade underneath his hand and kind of like rears it back like this. Um, and the next uh, guy to move is landing pad guy. Oh, actually, I'm gonna have the other ones that are there on the in the guarded act as well. Let's see, attack, and he also succeeds against your boy. He rolls a 17. Uh, so because he's being uh, ganged up on, he does get injured, uh, but he's not. But he gets he gets uh, targeted. His shield gets targeted, and they strip the shield belt from his uh, waist. So he's no longer protected, but uh, he is not dead yet. Uh, okay, so 
let's see, after those, that one goes, I'm going to say I'm going to spend two threat uh, to have this guy go again. And now it is back to Pardo. Take your revenge. <laughs> Pardo, after being stabbed, just looks up at the man and says, nicely done. And <laughs> proceeds to stab him. Or nice. attempts to, at least. Roll battle. One two successes. success. Oh, sorry. I saw. I thought I saw one. Yeah, I thought you rolled a one. You rolled a twelve, which is one success. But that's not bad. I'll roll for him and see if he doesn't get a one this time. He rolled a seventeen, so he failed. Uh, so yeah, describe how you disembowel over aggressive over here. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Hmm. Right. Like, well it's done, Ricardo. stab. <laughs> well done. I mean, nicely done is just like super ice cold. It's so, like I sort of imagine Pardo just like being like super business like and like, you know, <laughs> as so emotional we've done a as disclaimer you are. At the beginning of the session, like viewer discretion is advised. Cool. Pardo stabs into this man's solar plexus, tears Ooh. down, and yanks out the stomach of the man. Oh, mm. man. There's a satisfying wet clap as, you know, the innards of this guy just hits the, the pavement of the, the garden. This beautiful place stained with blood. <laughs> well done. Uh, let's see. Mm. And now the, the other inmates would like to go, although they all went. So then it's basically back to top of the initiative here. It is, oh, sorry. Davos. Davos. Um, I'm going to make a uh, dash for the Ornithopter and power it up. Oh, all right. Moving boldly. Excellent. Uh, give me a move roll. Um. Three successes. You got it, and you get one momentum to boot. Okay. All right. Uh, once you, uh, yeah, you could spend that two momentum. Actually, you you're have to, there. If you so. roll under, which one of your, if you roll under the skill or something like that, that you. Yeah. Yeah. If you're swift, yeah, then it counts as two. Uh, if you roll underneath your focus. Under your focus. That's right. With what you're doing. Got yeah. it. Okay. Uh, yeah, definitely three successes, and he just immediately is like, he's not even in the seat and flicking switches on and starting to power the thing up, and uh, nice. as he passes by, the uh, general screams at him to get in and to cover. You their notice escape. something though, <clears throat> mm -hmm. as you're as you're moving onto the landing pad, you see Daphne like uh, turning colors and just kind of like uh, on the on the landing pad. Like, you also notice this cloud of like purplish haze, like just making its way through. It's mm -hmm. being emitted. It's being like dispersed by like some sort of canisters that are like uh, rolling around on the landing pad. Uh, do you have a, an asset that you can use to cover your face? If not, I would need you also to make a discipline. Uh, yeah, he pulls up the Juba cloak, <laughs> pulls it around smart. his face. Smart, very smart. Okay, so yeah, as soon as you get into contact, you're just like, nope. <laughs> you, you don your, the the mask that you got on Arrakis. You make your way onto the uh, onto the the ornithopter. Start hitting, fl uh, flicking. Uh, How big are getting it ready. those canisters that um, is doing the 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 dust? Like this. Yeah, it's 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 spores that were uh, collected and refined and then like packed into these uh, into this uh, ejected uh, canister that basically disperses it. It's a paral. It's a paralytic. Uh, so as soon as it makes skin it's, contact with you, just like, oh, and it's floating nerves. around everywhere up here. It's floating around on the uh, on the landing pad. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna. You said I got one extra momentum, so you can have another threat. I'm gonna go, and then I'm going to use the ornithopter's wings to bat that shit out of the air, like to literally just Smart cause idea. it to disperse. Okay, you got it. That's that works for me. Okay. Excellent. So yeah, you see, uh, he, uh, you see Davos takes initiative. He just bolts past everybody, jumps in the ornithopter, starts starts it up, and you see the ornithopter wings kind of like, just you know, like rotate out and start 
flapping really fast, like start vibrating, and like the cloud uh, just disperses completely from the uh, the landing zone, which is good because you know that could have gotten really bad really fast. <laughs> uh, okay, well done. Now the opposition will move. Brand new round, so they get a turn. One of them is going to try to wrest controls from of the ornithopter from you. So one of them jumps at you and like tries to like stab you in the neck. That was roll that uh, battle, please. Can I roll? Pilot instead. <laughs> yes, you may. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, Knock him off with a thropter. Uh, no, I'm just gonna like angle it up, and he just rolls back. Uh, um, yeah, I'm gonna do move injustice. This guy can get fucked. Um, <laughs> that's three successes. Oh fuck! Yeah, more than you needed. Uh, so you get another uh, two successes back. Uh, of momentum, so you have three sitting in the pot right now. All right, describe how Davos takes out one of these inmates who's trying to like open the door to the ornithopter and stab him in the face uh, with the ornithopter. Uh, did he get in? He's trying to get in. He's like, oh, he's like, trying to get in on the door, and he's like, yeah, um, he's right he, there. <laughs> he's just gonna like be like, no, and then turn the ornithopter's wings right into him and just dice him. Oh. Fuck. All right. Yeah. So you just pull a maneuver and like you rotate the wings around in such a way. And this this guy just gets splattered onto the windshield and you just like hit the button. It's like, zzz, zzz, just, like <laughs> windshield wiping his ass away. He's just going to well mutter done. amateur. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well done. Uh, let's see. This guy was cleared last time. So. All right. So now it is. The, I'm going to spend two. Oh, actually, I guess I'm. I think I'm out of. No, I'm not completely out of threat. Actually, uh, second, you still owe me. No, it would be Lysander and Daphne who owe me. I have one more threat. And I'm gonna save that one for a die roll. Uh, okay. So it's gonna skip right to Lysander. Lysander. I can't uh, do anything. <laughs> Lysander, you just saw Daphne like rush towards the the landing pads. You just finished dissecting this guy, and you're like having problems getting your swords uh, unstuck from his ribcage. Uh, but other than that, <laughs> it's a madhouse. Uh, not too far away, actually. You see, Archibald had like launched himself at, at some assailant, disarmed him, and shot him with his own gun. Now he's in, he's on empty. Like, oh, <laughs> uh, how do you want to proceed? Uh, my priority is Lady Daphne. Um, right. So, did Davos's is- uh, move it definitely dispersed the pollen, right? Yes, it did. Yes. Okay. That's what oh, I and actually, I forgot. I forgot one thing. Uh, Davos, you can move one of the enemy uh, tokens to whatever whichever zone you want. Uh, I mean, it, as long as they're adjacent. So, like, you can move somebody from the landing pad to uh, you know the the place ne- the zone next to the landing pad, or from the interior garden to somewhere outside of that, uh, if you want to. Uh, move one of them as part of your moving boldly uh, strategy. Sorry about that. There's still two on the landing pad currently. Daphne's paralyzed and uh, uh, from your vantage point you can see that um, the Mentide is out outgunned a two to one. Well, not two to one either. It, they're sort of even odds right now, but one of Lysander's guards is surrounded. The other guards have been dealt with. The other in, the other inmates have been dealt with. Who do you want to move? Was that to me? I thought that was to Davos. I had forgotten that Davos had moved boldly on the on his okay. initiative, so the, it's technically his his move. Uh, okay. Oh, move. is it my move? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't sure I had for, if you caught I had that or not. <laughs> I had forgotten that you moved boldly, and when that happens, you get to move one of their uh, pieces around, so to speak, as a pawn. Like, oh, oh. You, they're going to go that way. Like, you're drawing attention to yourself because you're moving, like... Oh, got it. Way. Yeah, okay. Then that's what I do. Like, hey, try to get my thoughts. Which one? <sighs> Who would ask me that question? Um... You can say one of the enemies on the landing pad leave as, after seeing that display. Or yeah, one uh, of those fuckers is like, I'm not getting sliced and diced, and <laughs> this ain't worth it later. All right. 
<clears throat> so then that one moves into the zone that is currently being occupied by Archibald and Lysander. Uh, I'm guessing Lysander wants to move towards Lady Daphne, uh, unless you want to correct me on that, in which case you will use your movement to get into that zone. You can, you have, you're sitting on three momentum right now, which you could spend two of uh, oh. to say, keep the initiative and keep going, or if you have another determination point, which I don't think you do, you can spend that and go again as well. I have no more determination, but uh, I am very pleased to hear that I have three momentum. Yes. So you can spend two, keep going, and then you can have an extra momentum if you want to get an extra die uh, thrown in on top of your two. If you want to slice and dice one of these people, because one of them is moving closer to where Daphne is, and one of them is like, leaving in the other, other direction. I have fed the threat goblin enough this evening, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so just spending the momentum to get to Daphne. Sure. All right. So yeah, you, you can get to Daphne without having to spend the momentum. It's it's whether you wanted to spend the, the momentum and like go again, essentially, and like slice and dice one of the remaining uh, inmates that are there. Or move her out of that zone, alternately, if you wanted to do that. Um, just getting to her and, and checking on her for now. Uh, you check on her? Because yeah. she looked like she was dying, question mark? Not dying, it's just like, you can, you feel her pulse and it's steady, it's just like she can't move. Like, she's covered in like these weird purple spores. By the way, go ahead and make a discipline check, because the, now that that those spores are being moved out from the, the landing pad, and so you just walked right into a wall of it. Darn, I can't utilize my costume <laughs> piece as a mask. Oh, you're, what, which piece, which, uh... Oh, it's, uh, it's just it's the, the color my, of his jacket. jacket, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Um, you can use it. You can make a move roll to see if you can get out of the way because you see a, a wall of purple coming your way as it's being dispersed from the landing pad. So, yeah, you can be like, oh shit, move out of the way. Yeah. Or, you know, move, react quickly enough to cover yourself so that you don't too, you don't also succumb to it. Oh, Co I prefer so cover because I don't want to get to Daphne and then be like, oh shit, and run away. Right, you both fall over. <laughs> Who does? Am I using a focus? Oh! Can I use my body control focus for move? Yes, you can. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, don't breathe it in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I got, I rolled. Aha. Nice. I you rolled. rolled exactly what you needed because it's, it's a, yeah, three difficulty. So, yeah, you're just like, oh, shit. shit. You're like, you're cautiously approaching the uh, uh, the landing pad. You see Lady Daphne, you check her, her vitals. She's okay. She just can't physically move. Um, you want to try to extricate her out of there? Like, just drag her away from the landing pad? Or do you want to take her to the, the, the ornithopter that Davos is in control of now? Thopter. Thopter. Because right. I get saw, to the um, get to the thopter. Because uh, <laughs> I, I saw Davos's mad slice and dice skills with the, the wingies. <laughs> the wings, nice. Yeah, you get Daphne and you escort her to the thopter. Uh, excellent. Well done. Uh, I think the last remaining vestiges of these enemies are going to go. One of them is going to go for uh, Pardo, the other one's going to go for the uh, uh, the guard. The guard's going to get a chance to retaliate. One. A ten. Oh, shit. Okay. So this guy just gets skewered by the guard. The other one goes to attack uh, Pardo. And gets one success. Pardo, I need you to roll battle. This one tries to jump on your back. Uh, when you're not looking, when it tries to like tackle you into the uh, into the fountain. Oh no! Ardo just screams. Ah! <laughs> he tackles like time for you to die, old man. He like like you know tries to like uh, like bring the knife down on top of you. And you're like ah! struggling against them. Uh, okay, now it is Norma's turn. Still one enemy on the on the landing pad. The remaining guards are gonna are also paralyzed. They're not going anywhere. Uh, could I get into the doctor and man the uh, guns? Yes, you can. I'm going to do that. <laughs> okay, you jump into the co-pilot seat or on the side, and you uh, you wheel about you you uh, direct the the turret that's on the bottom to swivel and uh, move over. What are you uh, what are you what are you uh, using? Other memory. Other memory, yeah. So you know exactly how to operate this thing. Give me a uh, a battle roll. Alright. Like need to be, be one success. 
Since I feel like this should be truth because I'm using the other memory and let's see. I think you near a whisper like yes like that. <laughs> With, Ooh. Okay, so uh, two successes and a complication. <laughs> okay, you get into an exchange of gunfire with one of the uh, uh, the ones on the uh, the landing pad. He's just like he sees the the ornithopter being taken control of, and the gun swivel his way. He's like, "Oh shit!" So it's taking pot shots at you as he tries to leave, uh, and he manages to hit some vital control, some vital function of the ornithopter. And now you're you're basically losing fuel now. Like he hit one of the wings or the wing controls and stuff, and like. You have like fluid like leaking out of the side and stuff, and he's just, just kind of like taking pot shots. But you just you effectively cut this guy in half with. Like, you want to describe how how that looks like when you're when normal operates a uh, onboard weapon? <laughs> uh, so I'm going to state that ours have some uh, Mala pistols attached, heavy duty, you know, carrier sized ones, and Norma just books it in and immediately mans it over to him, starts firing, blasts away some of the cover that he was probably sitting on until finally just a pot shot right hit in the head. Oh, yeah, his, I mean, coming from a vehicle, his head explodes like a cantaloupe, like he just falls over dead. Like he just gets splattered by that thing. Um, he's finished. Uh, let's see, one of the last remaining ones here. The Normas go, I think we have, how much momentum are you sitting on right now? One momentum left. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next would be Daphne, who's still uh, paralyzed at the moment. However, what the remaining bad guys are going to go. This guy just went. So now it's this guy's turn. Uh, you're on. One of the guys from the landing pad runs out and runs into you, Archibald, and sees you holding a an empty uh, Mala rifle. So he's like, "Oh, this is my one chance to kill this guy." So he pulls out a. He pulls out a, a Mala pistol and he's like, end of the line, general. And that's when this this thing, this, this next thing happens. You hear from the surrounding hedges, you hear a growling sound. Mm. Second. Giant kitty? Giant kitty? <laughs> Wait for it. Uh, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> you realize why our house is called House Treshire. You see this leap over the hedges? Oh god. Giant kitty. I was saving this one for last. Uh, you see this thing like leap out of from the, the interior gardens and start mauling this guy to death. Uh, yeah. So he does not make it. It's a pretty messy death. You see, he's like, uh, end of the line, general. And all of a sudden, you hear like a, and this thing like leaps over the side. And he's like, what is that? Like, it clamps onto his arm and starts like thrashing him back and forth. And you hear a snap as his arm breaks while it's in the embrace of, the, of a jabber walking jungle cat. Uh, he howls in pain. And as soon as he does, the, the thing has it on the ground. He just goes for his throat and just like tears it out. Just starts munching on him. Uh, you see, when that happens, he just he quick he dies a quick death, and the thing just kind of looks up and locks eyes with you for a second. Uh, Archibald licks its chops and then kind of starts purring and walking over to where you're at. <laughs> uh, the remaining security forces they see like Pardo's being held down by one guy with a knife to his throat. Uh, there's like a pop like in the distance, and this guy just goes oops and just gets knocked off to the side and you hear his knife clatter into the uh the well of the fountain that you're that he's uh he's got you over uh the sanders troop helps you up are you, M master mentor are you okay yes yes i'm perfectly fine the marshal's been injured we need to get him to the thopter everybody to the landing pad you see he starts trying to rally everybody else around him uh you all are already at the landing uh pad however on to onto the thopter uh, now that the security forces seem to be taking control of the situation once again, uh, how do the rest of you react? Like, what do you do? Uh, D Lady Daphne, your senses are starting to come back to you slowly but surely. You feel numb on your extremities, but 
you're, you're able to like breathe normally and everything seems to be working in order uh, as soon as you get brought in from the uh, from the um, uh, the barrage of uh, Zyroloft that you encountered earlier. Yeah, I, I feel like this was probably a really terrifying experience for Daphne because she's got Prana Bindu. She's used to having perfect and total control of her body. Yes. Uh, so she's quite shaken. Yeah. And you're just like, ah. Oh. Uh, so that scene pretty much ends. Uh, you can uh, you can take it back to wherever you like now that you're mostly in control of what happened and the... Uh, the instigators were soundly defeated by the security forces who had at least three or so rounds to sort of rally and converge on the little uprising that they had to try to take out the general. Uh, some of you have been injured, but it's all superficial stuff uh, that'll clear up with just a day's worth, worth of rest and such. Um, where does the entourage go from here? Your ornithopter is a bit damaged, unfortunately, uh, but nothing a few hours of uh, repair can't uh, fix. Yeah. Uh Davos is the pilot, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. just definitely just be like, Davos, get us out of here. Now. Well, General, it seems your pardon has been enacted. And just, if everybody's parole. on board. He's on parole. <clears throat> parole. <laughs> I never think, I, I'm not on the Thropter. Is he not? Not a, yet. Did, well, we didn't get everybody on there yet. Okay. Oh, oh, I think we would have waited to take off until we had everybody. Yeah, we would. I would have just hovered around or picked everybody up, uh, flying well, around the facility. You haven't worked out a deal just yet. You only just came to meet with Archibald. So as soon as the other inmates are being rounded up, so is he technically uh, rounded up by the security, the local uh, guard. Um, you can intercede, of course. Uh, they can they can stop on your behalf because obviously uh, you know you were you were here to see him, and then this happened. Uh, so you can still uh, as talk far to him as in a Davos location. is concerned, he's just going to suggest to Daphne to hang her head out the window and tell him to get on board, and we deal with the paperwork <laughs> later. <laughs> <laughs> deal with the paperwork later. You you can do that. You're you know you're uh, House of the Lanzrod. You can just be like, yeah, uh, we'll call the warden later. This right. isn't a prison escape. This is a visitation. <laughs> uh, yes, Daphne. We're like we're we're taking custody of General Archibald now. Okay. Yeah. You you mentioned that over the uh, the comm to the uh, the tower that oversees uh, uh, air traffic, and they're just like one of the guys at the console just turns towards the warden, and they're like, "What we're we gonna do? Say no? <laughs> it's, it's their house. It's his house." Calling on them, they want to expend. The, they want to execute him back at the castle. They can go ahead and do that. So they're like, "Yeah, by all means, my lady, he's yours to, ta he's yours to take." Godspeed, General. We'll cut off the line. Uh, you fly everybody back to the castle. I'm assuming Davos. Uh, yeah, definitely. Okay. I Very would like good. to have a quick exchange with that one guard, though, the one that was oh. fighting alongside me. Bring yeah, go board. ahead. It's one of those Sanders. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> You stayed to protect me. Thank of course. You. <laughs> you could have run with Lysander, but no. I'll so suggest I doesn't run in the face of battle. Good. Um, you see the, uh, you start flying back to uh, Castle Cheshire and, uh, Lady, da Lady uh, uh, Duchess Adeline has already been uh, advised of what happened by now. Like they, the you know the the, the garden called ahead and it's like, hey, there was an altercation. They're on their way to you now uh, to make sure that they get there safely. So there's already an entire troop uh, waiting for you at the landing pad, armed and ready with shields, you know, bristling and everything. Uh, so you get a, a sort of a general's welcome, <laughs> Archibald. Is the they want to thought their lands and doors uh, drop down, and you see like there's a group of people like saluting there at the ready. Good to know you guys are happy to see me. You see the they start walking you in, and it's a bit of a weird welcome. Uh, they uh, obviously the along with them is Omelas, who you know to be the 
multi-generational house advisor to House Cheshire, to the Duke, and now to uh, Duchess Adeline. And um, he has very uh, openly just sort of given you the, the venom eyes as soon as you walk in and just kind of smiles through his teeth at you. Nobody's like, right this way. The Duchess is waiting to uh, to receive you. First, we need to get you out of those clothes. He, says, he points <laughs> derisively to the uh, universe, uni- uh, the olive drab uh, sort of uh, prison uniform that they've given you. The yes. I will uh, go in my general's attire. I will not go in without my status. Excellent. This time you're you're all witness to it. Um, as as you know, it, with within House Cheshire itself, because you have a reputation on Jabberwock as having as being expert tamers of the Jabberwocky and Jungle Cats, you see several of them sort of lounging around and everything like that. As soon as the general walks up, though, some of them perk up. One of the older ones gets up and actually walks over to him and starts nuzzling him. It seems that uh, this one recognizes and remembers him. I'm gonna name him. <laughs> name whatever if you I want. Could. Sure. <laughs> the gray-haired one. It's one of the older uh, jungle cats that are hanging around the the, the palace, the, the castle all the time. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pet him and be like, "Ashes, you're so." Oh, wow, you're still alive? <laughs> I haven't seen Ashes. this guy for like 15 years, and he just goes like this. He's like, oh. He gives him scritches, and he's just like, he's loving it. He's just like, it's almost like uh, like he's meeting an old friend. It's good to know someone. Precisely. That's precisely right. Someone uh, wants to see me. Your calm, uh, Lysander, uh, goes off as soon as you, as you, as soon as you touch down. Uh, you see a house retinue troop uh basically attach themselves to Daphne and they're escorting her everywhere she goes. Actually, being called before Sorry, that no, happens, no. uh as Daphne starts to get off on the ornithopter, uh Davos wants her attention for just a moment. Oh. Go for it. So uh and as he's powering down and sort of shutting down the thing and not really looking at her, he's trying to just talk in somewhat gibberish but not because he can, he's got that uh, power to, or the ability to speak in innuendo. Um, mm-hmm. So he'll say, "It looks like you ordered a sandwich with a lot of ingredients you weren't expecting." Meaning, <laughs> that... <clears throat> <laughs> well done. And uh, uh. but uh, before she can even respond, he'll stand up and look her dead in the eye, and he be like. If some cargo needs to fall off in one of our journeys, or if some cargo needs to not make it, if certain precious cargo needs to not make it to its location, um, you just let me know. Sometimes we have to eat what we are served. And Fair enough. <clears throat> the murder of one's kin is a terrible sin. <clears throat> well, you know. When they're left out in space to frost, it's not exactly murder. Just a happy accident. Daphne, you're starting to get a sense as to where your mother got this ruthless reputation from. It's actually coming from Davos. <laughs> <laughs> He's an old space pirate. He sometimes you gotta do shit. <laughs> Walk the plank. What? There's no ocean. Yeah. Exactly, it's space. Exactly, it's the void. <laughs> Walk the space plank. Yeah. Uh, he, he probably would have actually built a plank that just goes out into space. Uh, Daphne will uh, essentially um, communicate in the same innuendo. Uh, we have to make de- the best we can of this situation. Uh, killing your family is a terrible crime. Which she thinks Archibald is guilty of, so. Mm-mm. Again. The wrongs don't make a right. Yeah, he'll just continue to imp- uh, imply that, you know, an accident's an accident. <clears throat> Your loyalty uh, is commendable. You're my retirement, Your Grace. <clears throat> and just kind of leaves her to be. <clears throat> As you're uh, dismounting the the ornithopter, you see the troops go out and they meet with the Lady Daphne as quarter back into the castle. 
Uh, you can all go sort of your own separate ways. It's the day is starting to wind down some, uh, so you know dinner is going to be prepared sometime later in the evening. But you have some a few hours in between here and there to sort of freshen up and do you know go about your own business. Uh, Lysander, however, you're being called to the Duchess directly uh, to her personal chambers, where other people are are seemingly gathered. Uh, when I'm you afraid. report. <laughs> When you arrive, uh, she has this very grave expression on her face, and you see standing in the room also is William. And uh, she's like, shut the door. And, uh... Yeah, this music's like, am I gonna die right now? Oh. <laughs> like, is that... No. Uh, you see uh, William standing there, and he kind of regards you, nods as you walk in. And she kind of hold, brings you too close and is like, whatever happens, whatever just happened on the garden, I'm entrusting the both of you to watch General Archibald very closely and report directly back to me. You notice Omelis isn't here. And he's like, I want you both to report directly back to me, not to Daphne, not to anyone else, but to me. You will make myself clear. Yes, ma'am. You see William Lodz, your grace, of course. And he's like, um, is there, are there any other actions that we need to take? Prepare a room for him. Dinner will be served promptly at the, at the appropriate hour to so be prepared. And she kind of like, she's still in the hover chair from the recent injury that she sustained. And so she's just kind of floating around. She dismisses you. Uh, what do each of you do uh, upon your return back from the garden after, of course, they've taken, taken uh, Dr. Sloan comes out to meet each one of you and so he says, oh, I can help you with that, and, you know, look over your wounds and such. Uh, beginning with uh, Daphne, what do you want to do? Uh, Daphne has a um, similar attitude to Archibald, where this is going to be an important dinner and she wants to look her best and her most regal. So that is what she's going to spend her time on. That and uh, shaking off whatever uh, lingering effects of the spores there are. Mm. You, you're, you have enough of practice now that you're out of the situation. You can maintain control of yourself. Uh, so you kind of like practice your breathing exercises and you start looking into your wardrobe, start pulling out some very nice garments that will, you know, accent... Uh, uh, your your features and you know uh, given the lighting that you know to expect at in the uh, dining room hall uh, excellent yeah and like she's uh, not just going for like uh, something that looks nice she wants clothes that will convey like I'm a judge oh this is very yeah. official okay I like yeah. that that's good <laughs> you break out the nice brooches and like uh, you know the, the color the colors that complement the, the official uniform of, uh, you know, the commander of the armed forces and such. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a very good touch. Yes, uh, essentially the the Dune equivalent of a power suit. Yes, excellent. Okay. All right, so you're you're off doing that, and you, yeah, you're gonna wow everybody when you when you get to the dining room uh, hall. Archibald, you are shown your old quarters. They are exactly as you left them. Yeah, so you, your head's kind of swimming when you get brought back in here. There's like a flood of memories that hit you all at once, uh, both good and bad. And then you're shown to your room. What do you do in the scant hours before you're summoned for dinner or supper? I... I remember... I'd actually like to kind of go in the desk and they are there is a false bottom in one of the drawers. Okay. I want to take one out and and I want to read a, a love letter I got sent from my betrothed. Oh. Mm -hmm. Then after that, 
I'm going to put it back. And then I'm going to get ready for the dinner. And with this one, I'm going to kind of do the exact opposite of what Daphne would do. Like, I'm going, I am going to dress more my high status, but more of the fact is you need me a lot more than I need you right now. Um, yeah, so you read over this old letter and it kind of, it still stings the same way that it did back then uh, because you know what happened to her. Um, so you're kind of like uh, pondering this. Do you wander the palace or do you stay restricted to your room? They didn't say that you couldn't go anywhere. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't wander the palace, especially since I, ha I haven't been here for 15 years. So I'm going to I'm going to look around. I want to know what changed. I want to see the views again that I haven't seen in 15 years. Yeah, you, you pass by the Duke's old uh, room and you kind of pass your hand over the door in remembrance, uh, your brother. And you see the 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 only well the one place they don't seem to allow you access to is is uh, Duchess Adeline's quarters, which used to be, uh, which used to be, yeah, used to be the uh, um, the Duke and the Duchess's quarters. And uh, so they, there's there are actually guards posted there, and like, sorry, sir, you're not allowed. Um, so you just kind of pass your hand through the, uh, by the door and just kind of like remember what that felt like uh, on your on your bare fingertips. Uh, you also are not allowed in the in the uh, the dining hall, at least at, at this point in time. Everywhere else you uh, oh, <laughs> and the war room. There are guards posted there as well, and it's locked. You're not allowed in the war room currently. Uh, obvious reasons. Bit of irony, but yeah, obvious reasons. Yeah, no right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Pardo, you have some time before dinner. What does the Master Mentat do in his time? Quick bandage for any stab wounds I might have gotten in the scuffle. Get mm -hmm. to a new uniform. Nothing fancy. Just the same sort of uniform. It, if it works, it's even why like fix it? It's like all brown. <laughs> like it's all like brown. all brown, yeah. <laughs> Very Little bland. Lapels and that's it. Okay. Uh, and Pardo would actually try and find Archibald to introduce himself. Ah, very good. You see him wandering the halls as you're, uh, you know, after you finished uh, fitting yourself in a new uh, outfit. Uh, you see him just sort of wandering the halls, looking around. Yeah, he. Had, uh, I'm assuming Archibald, you were given some of your old clothes that are still there that still fit you, so you could wear your best uh, to the dinner uh, reception, as it were, or you could just go however you like. You're still, when you arrive, you're still in your, you know, olive drab prison uniform, effectively. Oh, no, I'm going to be full gen. When I walk in there, my freaking presence is going to be known. So, like, fully decorated, every medal that I've ever earned on here. It's, <laughs> like, I'm going to, like, you missed out on a lot of shit. I could have helped. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you find uh, Archibald wandering the halls. Uh, Pardo, how do you... Uh... How do you approach him? Pardo walks up briskly, hands, like arms pressed to his side as always. He just raises an arm up and half shouts, General. Hello. Yes. Who are you? I'm Pardo Reed. It is a pleasure to meet you. And sticks his hand, lowers his hand for a handshake. I'm going to observe to see if there's any funky going on with this handshake. I know he's a mentat. <laughs> yeah. Do you I can tell about the red, the stain on his lips. Yep. Do I gotta roll anything for that? No, not at all. No. Okay. You, you, no, yeah. There's nothing you funky. Can tell. Okay. No I funkiness would... in this hand. <laughs> I would uh, take his hands. Nice to meet you, Pardo. I'm going to assume you're the uh, mentat. The new one. Uh, I am. I am Amentat, I am the Marshal and current War Master. And I would like to extend an invitation for a tour after dinner. I've got this whole 
compound memorized. And I would like to potentially extend an invitation to play. I just looked it up. It was not chess. It was the chess equivalent of Dune. Chops, yeah. Chops. An invitation to play Chops at one <laughs> point. Well done. He, uh... I agree. But perhaps after dinner. Though, I do have to say, I played a lot of that game in prison. I've gotten pretty good at it. Think you can really beat me? <laughs> a victory is only half out. the fun. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, go on. Sorry. Oh no! Uh, did you have anything to add uh, to uh, Pardo's uh, invitation? No, I said I'll accept it. Excellent. All right. Thank you. Davos, you have some time before supper. What does the uh, the treasurer of House Cheshire do? Um, he's got to check his messages and see if anybody maybe have tried to contact him from Arrakis. Um, otherwise, he'll send a message to uh, what was that guy's name that he met on Arrakis? Iblis. Iblis, right? Um, ask him if he uh has made any connections or if he's heard anything um, in that uh, he sends him a little seed money to try to maybe establish some more contracts or gain favor with the house. Okay. Um, he's alerted you that uh, you, you're, you've you impressed the, the Fremen uh, there. Mm -hmm. uh, they hail from a, a, siege, a siege called Tuono. Uh, and they like the way that you handled yourself in the time that you were on Arrakis and in Carthage in particular. You were there for like a better part of a month. Mm -hmm. So you're Duncan Idahoing this shit. Uh, you spent some time with uh, Iblis and with some of the Fremen uh, and getting making connections with the, with the smugglers. Not to a great extent, but you've already made your presence known. You've offered the Fremen their air support, which they, do, they really lack, mm -hmm. especially against the Harkonnens, which they were very interested in hearing about. So you already made a good impression. Uh, Iblis gives you the good news uh, that after uh, you know talking on your behalf to the the members of uh, CH uh, Tuono, the Fremen are interested in making bonds with you. Oh, okay. Not entirely sure what that means, but <laughs> they're interested in having a more of a intimate one-on-one -on -one meeting with you specifically after that. Uh, debacle that uh, took place at the top of that uh, that smuggler meeting point at night. He's got to contact his black market trader and mm -hmm. send, make sure that two ornithopters, two Cheshire ornithopters, but sort of like scrubbed of any livery or anything mm -hmm. uh, fall off a truck on their way to um, <laughs> that particular siege or close to the location and wants uh, Iblis to arrange the uh, the trade. Like he's not charging them Iblis. or anything. He's just yeah. he's gonna get a package. Here you go, free. In, right, <laughs> okay. basically. Iblis can do that. He uh, nobody really knows the location of these sketches, but Iblis can establish a communication with the Fremen and they can come pick him up, basically. So he can have them ready and waiting at the spaceport mm -hmm. uh, on a, or on a, on a landing pad in, in Carthag and they can come pick him up. Okay. Uh, so that he'll be in contact with you soon, he says. He'll um, prepare a very brief synopsis of what he's doing uh, to pass off to Daphne, and then he'll have a more, much more detailed report that he'll uh, eventually give to the Duchess. Okay. She's interested to find out what you know there, uh, so she's uh, awaiting like a full report. And there's just been a lot of activity since you got back, obviously, but um, that's good. Excellent. Norma, I think I know what you're up to, but... Uh care to tell the the class what you what norma does in her time you can keep it private uh, if you like if you don't, I have to. yeah no no norma's going to go and visit the duchess and uh console her on the fact that her brother or her husband's killer is currently living with us a guest yeah yes uh, she yes. you're the only person the only person allowed in her quarters like they when the others go to stop you they're just like Ugh. <laughs> they don't say anything to you, they just let you pass and uh, you can tell she's very emotional about it and she doesn't have Panabindu uh, training but 
she uh, is trying very hard to keep under her emotions under control given the circumstances. So she looks to you for uh, support. Uh, and she seems conflicted, like she's walking into a trap. And you can tell just by the way that her body language is that she's nervous about going forward with this uh, new endeavor with uh, General Archibald. And what strings may come attached uh, with this deal. Do you reassure her, or do you just kind of like quietly like pat her on the head or what have you? I will reassure her, and also uh, if I feel that she is sufficiently worried about Archibald himself, uh, I will uh, slip her a little something and uh, let her know that if she needs to uh, control him, then this is an appropriate method. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's like, I I appreciate your counsel as always, Norma. It's like I'll I'll take such things into consideration after dinner, perhaps. Of course. I'm going to give him a chance. And she wipes away a tear and uh Sander. You have the information that you've sought out, out to get. What do you do after you attain that information? What will Sander do with the scant time that he has before supper? Uh, still just observing unless there is definite evidence that the target will remain in their quarters. And if they will remain in their quarters, he will go to speak with her grace. Okay. So you report what you see as the, the rest of the evening unfolds until eventually the bell rings in the dining room area and everyone's called to supper. This We'll do this scene just because it, it's, it should be fun. Um, okay. So... Omelas, Adeline are waiting for everybody uh, at the in the, at the dinner table. It's a long banquet hall, and along the walls, everybody can see it, are portraits of the previous heads of household. So on one side, do Federico Cheshire. On the other side of the wall, Janet, Lady uh, Duchess Janet Cheshire. And on the far end of the uh, of the hall facing the entryway where you all sort of funnel in is uh, the portrait of Beatrice Cheshire, Lady Beatrice, Adeline's sister who died. They're all looking at you, General, when you walk into that, into that hall. And so you see everybody is free to take, to elect a chair at the table, except for you. They put you at the end of that table with your back to the door that you just walked in through. So you, every time you look up, you see the faces of the people you supposedly killed looking back at you. Kind of thinks Omelas. to him. Go ahead. He kind of thinks to himself, I expected this. <laughs> you expected this and yet you were not prepared. <laughs> Omelas and Adeline welcome you with cold stares. Welcome back, Archibald. He doesn't he doesn't state your rank on purpose. I hope your absence from these holes have made your heart grow fonder for me. And Adeline, who's just sort of hovering who just sort of hovers in on a suspenser chair. I wish we could have met again under very different circumstances, Uncle. I trust your accommodations have been sufficient. We kept everything as it was in your old room. You see Omelas uh, looks at her and then looks back at you. Whatever you require, simply inform the head of housekeeping and they will facilitate it for you post haste. And then you see, uh, and once everybody's seated, uh, the servants come out and the, the lead servant announces what the, the dinner is, uh, is how, what, did, what is going to be served at the supper. Rattlesnake Snoop served cold. And they, they bring out these like bowls and swimming in it are these Again. husks Ugh. of a dead rattlesnake. 
<laughs> I see your uh, suit before the appetizer, General. You kind of look at it. <laughs> Adeline sips from hers and never tears her gaze from you. Before I'll, long, go ahead. I'll eat it. I don't <laughs> care. It's food. It's better than prison food, whatever. <laughs> I, yeah, I just came from, and honestly, me eating this <laughs> is kind of a disrespect to her. So, <laughs> mm. The appetizer soon comes out. Steamed sweet rolls with slig filling. Slig, of course, being a hybrid pig and slug hybrid. The sweetest meat in this side of heaven, it's called. So they serve that to you. And so when you bite into it, it's, it's served raw the meat on the inside. So it's kind of like a bloody, runny texture that you get. It looks like, you know, this nice little puffy, you know, uh, sweet roll. And then when you bite into like dim sum, you know? When you bite into it though, it's like this slimy, you know, bloody, runny, you know. But it tastes great. Less filling. Finally, there's, you know, there's a lot of awkward, quiet, sort of terse conversation at the table. Uh, between uh, people, Adeline and Omelas are zipped. They don't really talk much throughout the, the, the entirety of the meal. And then the main appetizer, the entree, comes out. Braised hyena wolf, hyena wolf hybrid, and potatoes with sepulveda sauce and paired with a Caladan wine. Sepulveda, uh, some of you will know if you have a high enough understand score, is derived from the ancient Spanish word, which is called sepultar, which means to bury. So you get some hyena-ish food with potatoes and a, so a side sauce. And then finally, it's time for dessert. Crepes in the style of House Cheshire's Banner, a la flambe, served with a side of coffee Spiced with melange. Uh, normally, it's it's a uh, good form to make conversation during the meal, but it's you kind of you all get the sense that this is a very uh, formative function functionary dinner, uh, and everybody can't take their eyes off of the general. But also, there's a very strong presence at the end of the table where. Duchess Adeline is, and that's Daphne. And her outfit <coughs> seems to have to hold a, an air of command uh, the moment she walks into the room. Uh, how do you conduct yourselves uh, during the, the dinner, uh, beginning with uh, Daphne? Uh, Daphne is unfailingly polite and meticulous in her etiquette. Uh, and if it is good form to have a conversation during dinner, uh, then she will do her best to lead the people around her in, uh, you know, even if it's just small talk about, oh, look what the funny cats are doing in the quarter. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's funny you mentioned that. So Ashes uh, walks into the, into the dining hall and as you're like, you know, eating throughout the meal, Archibald, it, like you, you kind of like, leave your hand off to the side and you see like it's starting like lick your hand like it wants to it wants more switches or whatever like this old one remembers you which is kind of a surprise to Adeline she kind of like inclines her head when she sees that uh, Pardo how do you conduct yourself to through the dinner Pardo <laughs> yeah <laughs> Pardo would actually be trying to essentially bridge the gap between whoever he's be, been sat next to and like, Archibald, right? Like small talk here, a little small talk there, small talk with someone else, small talk to Archibald. <laughs> okay. I'm just bringing up random stuff uh, to everybody just trying to get conversation going. Okay. Yeah, uh, probably not working, but... <clears throat> <laughs> I mean, I if mean, you're close enough to Daphne, she'll totally bounce off you. <laughs> I imagine Pardo being like, so how about those ornithopters? Uh, <laughs> so, 
those are not, those are not optus. I mean, we do all of us have like the opportunity to tell some really cool no shit there I was stories. Oh, Davos is totally telling <laughs> like almost fairy tale level shit about Arrakis, but also about, you know, how he diced up some fucker on a landing plaid. Yeah, he's uh he's definitely telling wars. And he makes a per he always makes a big uh point to sit next to people he doesn't know with these things just to annoy them. <laughs> <laughs> He's kind of rubbing fun. elbows with Archibald, like, yeah, so you should you missed it. I wipe, I completely dissected this guy, and I wipe, windshield wiped him right off the ornithopter. <laughs> <Sorry, laughs> you had to miss that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Are you um, muted? That does not bother him at all. <laughs> he's pretty he, stoic. As, as he's stoic. actually, no, he's <laughs> like, huh. And I actually tell him a story. I'm like, I remember when me... Me and the old Duke, we were out drinking one night, and these two thugs decided to mess with us. Davos is going to be Let's really fucking say... rude and just be like, oh, one up the ship and storytelling. I see how it is. <laughs> well, hey. You can't just listen to an old man tell his stories, can you? All right. Well, I'm an old man too. I have my stories. I thought you would enjoy one. I'm older. <clears throat> we'll see. Agreed. Uh, Norma, how do you respond to all of this uh, back and forth? Uh, Norma's actually going to be spending the entire time, well, not the entire time, but throwing, you know, niceties and compliments towards Archibald uh, on his capabilities, all the while throwing in the old-fashioned Bene Gesserit type of uh, double speech so that I'm telling Daphne I'm warming him up. You know, I'm still on your side. Gotcha. Just expending this... these little niceties and then just like, yeah, but using the innuendo to, to communicate to Daphne, like, you know, just, just warming him up, just getting him ready. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Let's see. All right. So uh, once the dinner has sort of, oh, sorry, Lysander, how does, uh, besides just obviously like keeping eye on your your dinner guests uh do you interact in any way with archibald or the rest of the crew as you're as you're having this dinner no he's not a man of many words so okay. he's just people watching very good all right after the uh dinner has has finished uh, you see the duchess uh dismiss some of the servants and she's like all right then I suppose we should probably get down to business as to why you're here, General. Uncle. That would only be nice. You're free. you're free to speak freely, of course. We have a situation on Snicker. We have a group of um, insurgents that have taken control of manufacturing. We have currently inherited a great opportunity on Arrakis to provide support for ornithopter construction and maintenance by the Emperor. And so this is a very important endeavor for our house. I'm sure you understand. The problem we're having with these, ins these uh, insurgents on the moon is not like it was before, where we simply cannot send our secret police in there, the looking glass, to quiet these uh, rebel rebellions that have taken place. We need an assurance that we can regain control of manufacturing there. Otherwise, our ventures on Arrakis are finished. And as you know, as you may be well aware, House Cheshire is not the house that it used to be, she says. And she kind of looks at you pointedly when she says that, almost with an accusatory tone to her voice. Oh, I could throw some shade, <laughs> but I'm not going to. <laughs> Molly Wise. Yeah. <laughs> um, tell me, why haven't you just sent your own soldiers up there? Well, because these are our soldiers that we're dealing with, General. Yours, ones that what? served under you and your and my father, the Duke. 
They were trained by you. They know how to think because you taught them how. They know our tactics. They have constructed an entire cell-like structure for their organization, making it nigh impossible to infiltrate or to crush. We need your military mind, as it were. Moreover, we need your presence because it seems that a lot of these insurgents seem to have a, a very strong belief that you have been somehow wronged in your imprisonment on the garden. They believe you to be a person of character and of high moral integrity. You're here to prove them correct or otherwise. Are these terms acceptable to you? They are, but here's the thing. I'm a general after all. You were a general. No. A prisoner, technically. Yeah, but you can't tell me those soldiers won't follow me up on that moon. They may very well do that. I, however, am not proposing to give you power. I'm proposing to use you as an implement to suppress this rebellion. These, if these people will listen to you, then perhaps we can quell this before it spirals out of control. Someone has been funneling weapons to these insurgents. They are dangerous. They have been threatening the life of my family and our house. The only people that they may listen to, the only people who may instill some measure of reason into them are people like yourself. One of the few remaining patriarchs of House Cheshire that these old soldiers may be receptive to. If you're willing to assist us, we may grant you a modicum of freedom. And so I say again, are these terms acceptable to you? What kind of freedom are you going to give me? She looks to Daphne. You would be able to come and go at your leisure. You would be a member of this house and enjoy all the privileges therein. Although, with all due respect, Uncle, if you have ambitions beyond simply being able to live your life as a free man, I would suggest that the Lanzarad would take poorly the ascension of a known fratricide. Or, uh, forgive me, not known, convicted. You see uh, a servant comes up to the Duchess and, and whispers in her ear and like hands her a thing and she looks at it, hands it back and nods. And she's like, continue to talk amongst yourselves. We have, we were finally able to retrieve some of the old archival footage. I have to review. And she like motions for uh, whoever, Daphne, you can accompany her or bring anyone else you like, uh, but she requires your your presence. And she, you see her, she sort of swifts, swivels around in the suspensive chair and starts heading out on the opposite end of the, the dining hall, the doors open up, you know, she flows out of that. And she seems to be heading towards the war room. Uh, yeah. Um, I'll give a nod to uh, Lysander and Pardo, uh, knowing that Norma's going to do whatever she wants anyway. <laughs> okay, fair enough. All right, so the both of you uh, can accompany the, the lady to uh, the war room. You see the um, there's a holographic projection table that's laid up and that out comes this recording, the recording of General Archibald sabotaging the helic, the, the ornithopter that uh, inevitably caused the demise of Duke Federico and his daughter, Lady Beatrice. And you see uh, 
he walks in, he lands his ornithopter on a landing pad, he gets out, he makes his way to the bay where the other ornithopters are housed. There's nobody there. Eventually he walks in and he uh, he's w carrying what seems to be like a, um, a stunner or a pistol of some sort. And he is immediately met with uh, a growling Jabberwock jungle cat. It, it, as soon as it sees him, it stands up. It's like it, it raises its haunt on its haunches and growls at him, and immediately runs, it takes off into a run. But Archibald is faster, shoots the the thing, and it rears back, falls on its side. You don't know if it's alive or dead. He's walking with some sort of a gun. It might be like a stunner or a needle or something like that. But as soon as he proves to be the faster between the two, he tucks away the weapon, uh, which just goes off with a whisper. And he approaches the, the ornithopter and starts undoing the uh, conduits and, and such for the wings. You know, having intimate knowledge on uh, how Charles Cheshire constructs the ornithopters, that what he's doing is sabotaging in such a way that once the blades, uh, once the, the hub that houses the blades start to heat up, it will cause an inevitable combustion. It'll, it'll start to get way too, without the regulators, it gets way too hot and the thing will just burst into flames. And that's exactly what happened. He does that, covers it back up, and just le looks at the uh, the the lying uh, Jabberwock cat. Doesn't t think another uh, thing of it. Just walks out of the room, gets back in the ornithopter, and, and takes off. This reactions. This was known. Is there something here that I'm supposed to be seeing? This is what what happened on that fateful day. The man that we're housing in our home today, who we just had dinner with, that's what he did to your grandfather and to my sister. That's the tape everyone saw and what ultimately convicted General Archibald of a uh, fratricide. I understand. To the rest of be, you. I will be careful around him. Do the rest of you else uh, do or say anything in response to this? I would like time to study these tapes. Excellent. Not alone, You're... necessarily, but time. I'll agree. <laughs> From Adeline. the door. Oh. <laughs> so as Adeline. Is... Oh, shit. <laughs> Adeline is just like, what is it? She just seems a little confused. Like, why do you need to study this? This is all you need to know. Uh, One, face dances. I doubt they just popped up over the past 20 years. Two, but you mentioned that a face cat was dancers. trained. <laughs> that cat was trained by our house to detect intruders, and it perked up yeah. at him. Then he would have been an intruder. Yeah. That version of him, the one wearing his face. You, Izzy. Her face drops the moment you say that, and that's what we'll stop for tonight. <laughs> what? Awesome. That's all Wait, what happened? This session? <laughs> Sorry, I was... We'll, we'll tell you afterwards. Don't worry about it. You okay. were uh, that's all the time we have for this session, everybody. I hope everyone here and those watching enjoyed the show. We'll continue our adventures into the Imperium next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you enjoyed tonight's program, feel free to check out our awesome, awesome, awesome adventures and terrifying tales. Uh, Tuesday, Steve is running Twilight 2000, The War Story, and Space Lord Pajamas is doing awesome stuff with the new Mecha Hat campaign. Wednesdays, the awesomeness continues with the One Ring, Four Swords of the North. Rachel uh, runs Thursdays, uh, the new Vampire, the Requiem Brood game, followed by Pathfinder Undying. Uh, Friday brings us the continuation of uh, the epic uh, Massive Neolothotep campaign run by Rachel, followed by Scarred Lands, Director of Genesis Season 2. Uh, Saturday, we have the D&D campaign, Serpers of Ruination. Sunday, our very own Kisama runs the hot new 5e setting, playing Gia with the current campaign to rival the gods. And Cult Divinity Lost, Phantasm of Warrior. In the After Dark category, we have Solemn Veil up next uh, this evening and SCP the RPG Mimetic Hazard on Saturdays, all of them beginning at 11.55 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, for, now, uh, for those of you who stayed after the credits, uh, we can uh, now give votes to our uh, Eddie, to our players. Each player can select another uh, for any reason for this, for this session. Recipients will receive a reward in the form of an advancement point. Viewers can vote as well, but you got to be quick because voting ends as soon as the real clip finishes. Uh, so put your... Uh, Votes in the uh, Twitter chat as soon as you can. Twitter, the, the uh, yes, you know what I mean. Uh, recipients will receive a reward in the form of a reroll for one or all of their dice pool. 
So, uh, beginning with uh, Rachel, who played uh, Lady Daphne this evening. Who's your favorite and why? And uh, let the good people remind everybody who you are and uh, where they can find you online. Oh, goodness. Uh, so, my name is Rachel. I am Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere on the internet. Uh, and, uh, yeah, this Thursday we're going to have Session Zero for Vampire the Requiem Chronicle. It's going to be all Belial's brood all the time. I've got a cast of really strong role players. I can't wait. Uh, and then on Friday, uh, I will be running Masks of Nyarlathotep. Uh, it's also a lot of fun. We have closed out the New York chapter, and they're sailing to England on the Titanic. What? The Titanic? Doesn't Masks take place in 1925? Yes, it does. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah. And then I will also be in some veil in 30 minutes. Uh, so find me there as well. Uh, and oh goodness, votes. Wow. Wow, this is a hard, like, everyone was, like, really great uh, in the fight. Um, yeah, jeez. Um, I'm gonna give my vote to Key, or uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put myself into short-term danger so Lysander will trust me. Uh, I appreciate that. that have have yeah. my vote. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Jared, uh, tell the good people who you are and uh, where they can find you and who's your favorite for tonight. Hello, uh, my name is at Real Life Jared, and the uh, next time you can find me is going to be uh, Wednesdays, playing the One Ring with our illustrious Space Lord PJs over here. And then, um, geez, oh, Sunday with, believe it or not, Kisama, illustrious PJs. Sama, so super excited, honestly. Um, bah, for Dune, like, holy cow, that was nuts. Um, and my vote would probably go to Pardo because he is probably gonna be my only friend for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> your chest buddy, your chops buddy, yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, Accurate, he... sweet nothings in your ear, yeah. <laughs> yes. Key, uh, tell the good people who you are, where they can find you, and who's your favorite for the sequel. Uh, I am Kisama. The one and only is what I would say. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been Pardo Reed. You can find me on Sundays running Plangia and in other places all throughout the week and behind a Denny's near you. I vote <laughs> for tonight. <sighs> Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> mm. My vote goes to Lysander. Excellent. Very difficult choice. <laughs> uh, Sean, who played uh, Davos. Uh, Tell the people who you are and who's your favorite. Hey, I'm at Space Lord PJs tomorrow night. I'll be running uh, Mecha Hack. Um, I got some exciting stuff lined up for that then wednesday i'll be running the one one ring um yeah uh my vote goes to um hmm good question i'll say lysander because they had to sword play and lost in soldiers and had to chase after daphne doing daphne stuff so <laughs> <clears throat> always exhausting right Right. <clears throat> Devin, uh, tell the good people who you are, where they can find you, and who's your favorite. Uh, hello, all, and good night, all. My name is Devin. I have been Norma. You can find me online at Sword of Sullied, and tonight, uh, it's a good thing my character's not voting. Uh, I'm going to vote for Rachel for throwing the circle around and then trying to lead him away and playing Big Boss for the uh, dinner. But Norma would awesome. not because Norma are disappointing. <laughs> it was the not dice, right. not me. <laughs> what happens? Doesn't matter. Ambrose, who played uh, Lysander this evening, uh, let the good people know who you are, where they can find you, and uh, who's your favorite. Uh, everybody is my favorite, uh, obviously. But uh, you can find me all over Twitter and the internet 
Why did I just say Twitter? As Am Changeling, you can also <clears throat> find me on Etsy at Neat and Co Designs, and you can find me playing tomorrow in Twilight 2000, which is it's gonna be interesting. Yeah, it's definitely something I've never played before. Uh, my favorite this evening. I'm gonna have to throw it back at Davos for a the. Uh, quick move with the pollen and the ornithopter be the uh I, I pictured when when he chopped up the soldier the the ninja chop you know that they used to sell on infomercials and whatever yes and then... <laughs> slice, slice. <laughs> <clears throat> slap chopper <laughs> yes that's it slap oh yeah chopper. the slap chopper yeah that thing was great i have one of those that's yeah that's why i pictured him going slap 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 slap, slap. so um yeah and then also Offering to space keel hall or no. Oh, everyone. Just everyone at this point. Getting oh, space okay. keel hauled. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> well <Excellent>. then. <laughs> Everyone's getting airlocked. Most everyone. Let's go with most everyone. Mostly, yeah. Mostly. <laughs> Mostly they Excellent. all come in at night in space. So yes. <laughs> Well, everybody, uh, I've been Eric at Modern Recluse on Twitter. You can find me here later tonight for Salt and Veil, and then tomorrow for some Twilight 2000. Uh, big thanks, as always, to our patrons for supporting what we do. If you want to be awesome and do the same, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash Tales and keep up to date on what we do throughout the month by checking the calendar on vocaltales.com. And thanks to you, our viewers and fans, for tuning in. As always, never sit with your back to the wall. Always remember your shield emitter and be careful who you trust. For in the game of houses, nothing is truly as it seems. Good night, everyone. Ooh.